Hello, everybody. Hello. It's me. It's Ursa. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me? That's the main important question to start these things with, isn't it? If you can hear me, let me know in the chat. I'm still very new at this. I'm still absolutely convinced that I'm going to muck this up in some way. If I see lots of huzzas or lots of hellos, then <laughs> it's got to be it's got to be going well in some form. Hello. Oh, there you go. I can see some people in. How is everybody? This blustery, what is this, Friday afternoon? Loud and clear. There we go. Loud and clear is really good, isn't it? Huzzah! Oh, wonderful. We're back again, aren't we? Back again on the live stream, and we're not playing Civ Give this time, so don't worry, there's no eight hour intense Civ 6 marathon to watch through tonight. No. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. But before we get into that, oh thanks Sleepy, it sounds good, fantastic. Before we get into that, hello everybody, I'm welcome. My name is Ursa Ryan, you will know me from the Civ 6 and from YouTube. Can you eat crabs? No, never eat the crabs, never, never eat the crabs. Leave the crabs alone, they don't want to be eaten. We are going to be playing some Millennia today. Millennia, I know it's not Civ 6, it's not Civ 7 either. It's totally different. It's something new, something exciting. Millennia from Paradox. People who make Hearts of Iron, Crusader Kings. What else have they done? Victoria, Europa Universalis, Delaris. Oh, there's a bit of a rhyme there. Can we eat bears? No, never eat bears. Bears are sacred. Bears are wonderful. You should never eat those. It is absolutely not to be done. Ah, oh, it's not Civ. No, Mrs. Millennia. It's not Civ at all. Do I have any interest in Pal World? I've seen Pal World. So Pal World seems to be a bit of a, a mix between definitely not legally Pokemon, right? <laughs> and other things. <laughs> Except it's a lot more violent and you can eat them. Yes, that does look fun. I haven't actually like played it yet. So we should see. Do we have railroads in Millennia? That is the question, isn't it? That is the question. I, you know the answer to that? I don't actually know, because I haven't played all the way through to the end just yet. But, but, maybe we'll be doing some fun. Oh, I'm just sort of giving it a sec to let people wander in. But bears are tasty. No, they're not. No, they're not. Bears are wonderful. Bears are the cooks. Bears are the chefs of this world, as we should remember. Greetings from Munich. Hello. I haven't been to Munich, but it's supposed to be lovely. With the Black Forest and... How far is Munich from the Alps? Not far from the Alps, is it? Hello chat, bears are sweet. Yes. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? So, shall I show you a little bit about the game? I'll just pull the screen up for you. So you can see a little bit of what we're doing now. Or me beautiful loading screen of millennia. So. We have a little bit of an early access. I don't know what you'd call it. I think the demo is being launched to everybody. Uh, so if you want to go and play this, you can play the first 60 turns, I believe, of this game. So it's not out yet. We're still early release. You can go and play the first 60 turns. But we can do a little bit more than that today. We have a full build. Can't play the full build, but I've had access to it. I'm not far away in the Black Forest. A different area in Germany. I'm sorry. My knowledge of Germany is terrible. I do apologize. You'll have to just assume that I... I respect and love Germany and know very little about it. <laughs> Waiting for work to finish, Nicola. Aren't we all? Life is just one constant wait for work to finish. That is exactly, exactly what life is. So we have access to the full game of Millennia here. But we're only allowed to play the first three eras. But that should be plenty. That should be absolutely plenty today. We've got a lot to be cracking. I've been able to play this game a little bit behind the scenes. I know relatively ish what I'm doing so I can kind of show you through show you a little bit about it so you can come up with your own opinions as to whether or not it's any good whether you're looking forward to it and to be honest with you I think it's quite good honestly I, I repeat what I'd said in the build-up to this not not a sponsored stream not being paid to do this so I'm totally independent and yeah honestly there's a lot of this game I quite like so we're going to get a little bit, a little bit messy. Get stuck into the game, have a little play so you can see what it's like. 
Does this mean there is no need to wait for Civ 7? This is definitely not Civ 7, and unfortunately the drawings will never stop. <laughs> They're never going to stop. Yeah. Is this everyone's favorite Ursa doing his second ever live? I don't think this is my second live. I think this is my third live? No, fourth. Fourth live stream. Because we had the practice one, we had the mini game that didn't quite work, then we had the Civ give. Yeah, this is number four. This is number four. Exciting times, eh? How do you get access to the early access? If you want to play along, there's a, I've pinned a link in the chat so you can click that. I The game, I can't remember actually when it when it's sort of released for everybody to play. You'll be able to play the first 60 turns. It's all fine. Um, humankind, Old World, and now this. I know. Isn't it exciting? Regardless of whether or not this is the next big thing, isn't it exciting that Civ has some competition? Isn't that good? That's wonderful. I know, not sponsored. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Independence is good. Right. Should we start a new game? Should we get started? We've been waiting a little while. We've got a couple of hundred people watching. Wow. Exciting. Lovely, lovely stuff. Let's get cracking. So we're going to go in, set up a custom game. And you can see we've been playing around with this a little bit. Now, there are a lot of different nations that you can play, as in any 4X game, any world-based strategy game. So this is all looking good. First thing we need to do, of course, is decide what color we're going to play. We've got a selection of beautiful colors. The only color that I think you can't play, or colors you can't play, are black and red. They seem to be... Yeah, they seem to be... I think there's more barbarians and city-states and things like that. So, what color are we going to play? We're defaulting to blue, but if people have got a, a an important or, or, or sort of requested color, I'm happy to go for that. Oh, teapotted. Oh, thank you so much. That is really sweet. Love all the content and watch a bit every week. So figure I owed a little bit of support. Keep it up. That's very sweet. You don't know anything. It's my pleasure. It truly is. But thank you. That is very, very sweet. Um, what color should we go? Go on, Teapotted. I'm going to keep an eye out. You can pick. Pick the color. You've got all the colors of the rainbow apart from red and black. So, you know, don't pick those. <laughs> Regal purples people want. Yellow for sure. Yes. Feel correct. Yellow. Teapotted wants yellow. Thank goodness that is the correct answer. <laughs> Not that there is a correct answer, but there absolutely is a correct answer. Jacob Hall. Thank you so much. Huzzah! Huzzah indeed. Everyone likes that. So we're going to play as yellow. That is wonderful. It is an awesome choice. If, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, yellow is statistically um, and scientifically the best color out of every single color. No matter what people say, it is the best. It's why Rhizantium is yellow. So who do we want to play? I will tell you now, in Millennia, who you play as a nation doesn't make a difference at all. Okay. So the nation we're going to play dictates the name of our cities, although we can change the name of our cities. It changes the name of our units, but we can play, you know, we can change the name of our units. So none of that matters. doesn't matter at all. The, it's, it's only theme. It's only flavor. So these are the choices we've got. We've got Greece, Japan, Ottomans, United States, Brazil, France, Egypt. And then we go down uh, and then there's some more choices. Aztecs, China, Germany, India, Persia, Rome, Russia, Spain, Sweden, United Kingdom, and Zulu. Tell you what, Jacob Hall, I'll let you pick if you want. You've, you've made the second contribution. So if you've got a preference, you don't have to pick. You can just say you don't want to pick. Yellow equals Egypt. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ursa Ryan sounds like a Mesopotamian or Babylonian name. Does it really, Ursa Ryan? Huh. It's a good question, actually. That is a good question. Um, yeah, yellow is the best color because it helps with people that are colorblind. I didn't know that. I know there are so many different forms of colorblind. I never really, really would have, um, never would have thought of that. Rome, no Portugal. Yeah, there's no Portugal at the moment, but never know. Never know. First game is always Rome. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is that UK flag? I know I saw that. I think it's the Tudor Rose. I might be wrong. But I think it's the Tudor Rose. <laughs> Rome! Jacob wants Rome. Okay, we're going to play Rome. I think that is a good, that is a good choice. And this is why it doesn't really matter, okay? It doesn't really matter because 
uh, specifically, you can pick whatever ability you want, right? So all of these abilities, and they, they kind of, they're, they're different variations, but some of them are just little bonuses you get at the beginning, right at the beginning of the game. Some are based on your cities, some are based on later game abilities, and some are just generic movements or combat strengths with things that happen later into the game. So you can pick things that help a little bit, but at the beginning of the game, or you can pick something that doesn't really do anything for you, but helps you out later down the line. So it's a little bit of a little bit of a mix. And they all come, so so for instance, room discounted envoys is absolutely um, something that it suggests you have, but you don't have to pick them. I can pick, for instance, I think, where is it? Start improvement points or one of the extra production, regional production, I think is the Germany choice. So you can do that. Oh, map B. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is very sweet. It is 12, 10 a.m. here in Taiwan, and I guess I'm staying up a little later than planned. Glad I caught the stream. <laughs> I apologize for keeping you up. I apologize greatly for the standard of material that you are having to watch right now. <laughs> oh dear, what can you do? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the map down a little bit because I believe six players on a medium map was kind of what it suggests that you do, which is fine. We've, uh, what's going on? We're playing Millennia. We are playing Millennia. This is a different game. This is a Paradox game. And one thing that I've noticed is a nice, easy ability to take, if you're not sure what to do, is regional food. Because you want your city to grow. That That's basically it. It's really, really good. So, I know, a live stream. We're live. We're doing it. We're absolutely here. We're going to play a medium map because I want you to sort of see a little bit of everything. And I'm going to play a continents map. It divides the players into two continents. In fact, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Very typical continents map. You've got Pangea, you've got island seas, you've got islands. Not as many choices at the moment, but it's all you need. And then you've got sizes of map. Maximum eight players. You can't go more than that. Let's just get started. Eh? I think it's a lot easier with a new game to just show you what happens, eh? <laughs> it's better than watching more Benzino versus M&M reactions. I do not know what on earth you mean, Matt B. <laughs> now, um, this is this is lovely. This is I mean, everyone's been very, very sweet. So first thing we need to do is we need to name our capital, right? It wants us to be Nicodemia, which A, I can't say. Um, <laughs> which, is, which is normally the first thing. I cannot say that. Do we want Rome? Do we want Byzantium? Do we want Constantinople? Do we want Ryzantium? What are we going to name? Tell you what, Matt B, you've made the last donation. You pick. I mean, Rome might be the easier option, but, you know, play, play whatever you want. Ryzantium? Yeah. <laughs> Tempting, isn't it? Everything is sort of renameable. This is the map, by the way, as I kind of wait for this to go along. Oh, hello, white and nerdy. I see you there. I see you there. Hello. Ryzantium. Ooh, Byzantium. All right, tell you what, maybe Ryzantium will be what we pick afterwards. Uh, Byzantium. Let's rename our city, Byzantium. So. This is the city. This is our grand old capital of Rome. And you can see there are certain similarities to how Civ looks and typical hex-based grid games, right? It's a hex grid. You're all familiar with this. There's not, um, what's it called, planes? It's scrubland. And it's not, uh, I know it is grassland, right? So, okay, yeah, scrubland, grassland, forest. And then you can see we've got some resources. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this is a little bit of an absolutely pant start, but that's fine. <laughs> always play the stats. This is this is the thing we always do on this channel, right? We always play the stats. And uh, as a Roman person, I'm boycotting this game now. Oh, trust me, we're going to get a lot worse than this. <laughs> um, so there's some fish over here, which is cool. We've got some wheat. That's really handy. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually, this, this changes things. This is a much, much better uh, start than I thought it was because 
yeah, I, I like the heavy fog. I've actually turned the fog up to the maximum quality it can go. Before anybody asks, yes, this is this is a stream limited to 720. Uh, you won't be able to watch this in 1080. Yeah, literal fog of war. Isn't it cool? <laughs> so that's really cool. Uh, you can see my sort of units are just sort of wandering around the map at the moment. Um, there are bits of it that feel a little bit like Civ, right? The, the city will grow. It's got population. At the moment, we've got population one. It wants to grow. And as we get more population, we work more tiles. Now, if we go into this screen, we can see which tiles are in the nation. We've got two forest tiles, uh, three grassland tiles, and one scrubland tile. And so far, it's so good, right? Because we've got food and production. These are very, very similar yields to what we're used to. Yeah, lo lots of trees. And I, I saw this when I was first looking at it and thought, yeah, that's a really good touch. Actual, actual trees. Yeah, wheat. <laughs> not weed. No, 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 wheat. <laughs> Let's not be having that. Come now. Come now. So at the moment, you can see this little dude, this little dude. He's working some grassland. So we're going to get some two food in. And the way that cities work is a little bit different to Civ. So Civ is basically just you have a number of food that your citizens eat. So I think it's two food per citizen. And then you have to excess that food above it and then grow the city from that. This is a little bit different. We need uh, two food for every population. So, so far, so good. And if it's more than that, the city will begin to grow. Never heard the term scrubland. Is that used in other places more? We, I think that might be a bit more of a English phrase, scrubland. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a good question, that one. Um, so you can see there's a limit. Every resource a city needs to grow and be populous and big and lovely is capped out at double whatever that resource is. So we need two food because it's double our population. However, at the moment, we're earning six food. So we're actually earning two more food than we need to to grow. So I think, for instance, if we have a look at this, we are making six food. Two of them are coming from that buff. Do you remember right at the beginning I said we were going to pick a food buff for uh, Rome? And that's the nation starting bonus. So our city is getting two extra food. That's from there right now. And we're also then getting two from our government. Talk more about government uh, in a second. But currently we are a tribal government and we get some yields. There's a lot of yields, right? There are a lot of yields, ladies and gentlemen, in this game. And it's going to take a little bit of explaining, but we will get that. But most importantly, we get two food. And because of that, we're actually already capped. We have six out of two, but we can only get up to 200%. So we can only work four of those food. So at the moment, we might as well work a forest towel instead of a grassland because now we've gone to five of two but we're not growing any slower right so we've gained ourselves a production and that's actually 50 percent faster production in my land now because <laughs> i've only i only had if i if i show you this if i'm working this towel i've only got two production whereas if i'm working the forest i've got three it's 50 percent more it's beautiful it's wonderful so we have a look at some of the buildings we've got there are units there's a, there's a basic canoe. There is a basic war band. This is basically the warrior. They are pants. They're really, 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 really rubbish. But they're, they're basically warriors. And scout cavalry. Yes, in this game, scouts have horses. How cool is that? <laughs> Isn't that an upgrade? That is a quality of life thing I'd like to see in Civ 6. It really, really did. Yeah, there's actual hammers for production. I know. Not a cog. Barbarian horseman for the win. Yeah, that's exactly it. No cats. No cats on this at all. So each city can work one thing at a time, just like in Civ. So, so far, so good. And what's the typical Civ 6 start? A scout. So we're going to work a scout, and I'll show you why in a little bit. That's cool. Then we've got some units on the map. And you can see, if I click on a unit, there's two things that are really cool. First of all, we have a unit called the First Army. That's right. We can name units right from the beginning. 
And you can also see my second cool thing is there's three slots. So we can actually put multiple units into the same army. There is unit stacking, ladies and gentlemen, in this game. Not much of it. At the moment, we can only stack up to three. But there is unit stacking. So we start with two warbands. You can see it on the right-hand side. These are just sort of cheap, really rubbish warriors. If they get into a fight with a barbarian, they are going to get absolutely destroyed. I <laughs> don't mind telling you now. They're going to get absolutely destroyed. So we have a choice. Either I keep them separate and I chance my arm and we explore more of the map quicker, but we have to avoid all barbarian combat, or I form them into one army and try and keep them alive for a little bit longer. Now, I think I probably am going to chance my arm for a little bit. So we'll send this one up north for now, and I'll send this one down south. And you can see the problem with warriors, or <laughs> I'm gonna call them warriors, the problem with warbands is they don't have much visibility. They really don't explore much of the map. Luckily for us, scouts do. I've seen a scout with a cat beat two warriors, yeah. Yeah, that cat is ferocious <laughs> in Civ. It's absolutely ferocious. Yes. Uh, Bloodless Dragon says, give them an archer unit and have a base army. That is exactly right. There are different types of army in this game and stacking them together into different formations to beat different opponents is really important in this game. Really important. There are tribal villages. Yes, there are tribal villages and they are very, very important. Scouts are very useful because scouts actually do different things in this game. Let's have a look at technology. This is the first era, the Age of Stone. And you can see it's actually 10,000 BCE. So, so this is something I figured, right? When does Civ 6 start? 4,000 BC. So 4,000 years before the cutoff. And it ends about 2000 AD. So Civ 6, it spans over about 6,000 years, right? Because millennia starts in 10,000 BCE, that's 6,000 years before, it actually spans over 12,000 years. So millennia can say that the game is twice as big as Civ 6. And it's totally true. There you go. <laughs> it's petty, but it's wonderful. So this is the era. Now, the era itself in this game, it's a little bit like the ancient era, classical era, medieval era in Civ. But this is really, really big because the actual age itself unlocks quite a few things within cities. It, it, it actually, it, what do you call it? Um, it unlocks quite a lot to do with your empire. It's more than just a category of tech. So we want to move on to the second era, which is the Age of Bronze, pretty much as quickly as we can. To do that, we need to unlock three technologies. So we can pick three of these five. And once we've done that, we can then work on the next age to unlock the next age. So we need to pick three of these techs effectively. Sounds like an expert in clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> yes, BCE, before the common era. I didn't know what it meant either. I had to look it up and it actually makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's just the non-religious way of putting BC and AD. I think it's used quite acceptably in scientific circumstances these days as well. Our civ is about 12k old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The Stone Age. Age of Stone. Hey, look, they're going for a thing, all right? <laughs> and there are branching eras. Yes, we'll come to this one in a second. The, the first era, going to the Age of Bronze, that's pretty much standard, right? There's nothing you can do about that. But history buffs amongst you. What happened after the Bronze Age in human history? You know? I can tell you what it is. I can tell you what it is. After the Bronze Age, it was the Bronze Age collapse or the, the Bronze Age devastation. I can't remember the actual phrase for it. <laughs> but a lot of civil life, the Bronze Age collapse. There you go, Teapotted. Thank you. Thank you. You backed me up here. It was the Bronze Age collapse. And that's something we might see in this game. We started killing each other faster. That is exactly what we might see in this game, I'm just saying. <laughs> so we've got a choice. Either we can go for farming. Now farming unlocks plantations, it unlocks farms, which is quite common, and it unlocks granaries. Easy, or food storage, I should say. Granaries are actually advanced buildings. Food storage becomes before that. So, fine. Tribal elders 
unlocks for us a council building which gives us science. I know, government gives us science. Whoa, funny that. Defenses unlocks for us an archer, which is a much more powerful unit than a warband. Actually, no, it's the same, but it's more powerful for a very good reason, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And it gives your cities a little bit of power. Oh, Ben, thank you very much. Get yourself a coffee. You know what? You sleepy sofa there. I would love a coffee. <laughs> he says very cheekily. Thank you. I really appreciate that. The bronze, the big bronze age oopsie. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, so defenses is basically better units, but uh, it also gives us a three archer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oi, fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, it was too tempting. It was too tempting. Then we've got scouting. Scouting lets us move through and to build on jungle and deep forest. I actually don't know if we can see any of that just now. Oh no, this is deep forest. You actually see there's sort of a light green and then a dark green. This is deep forest. So we can't actually move through it. It's impossible. Do you see that little red symbol there? Yep, not happy. We can't go through until we unlock scouting. Uh, and then there's also a lookout building that means that our city can see a lot more. And we get a three scout. So we can go scouting and unlock a three scout. That's quite cool. And then workers. Workers unlocks a clay pit, which is quite a versatile improvement. It gives us some improvement points, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then it lets us levy workers project, which I believe is currently bugged because I can actually do levy workers right from the outset. I don't think that's supposed to happen, but that's, <laughs> that's just a thing. Yes, Sleepy Safe Bear is doing the Lord's work. Marvelous. Wonderful as ever. Thank you so much. There's a vibe about this game that looks like a remastered game from 2000, which I don't mind. Yet, yeah, you know what? It feels a lot more Civ 5 y, if that makes sense. They've definitely gone for more of um, a sort of gritty, noughties realism than they have the sort of more bouncy Civ 6. So it's fine. There's no science and culture tree, it's just one tree. That's broadly correct. So in this game, science is just one tree, right? But there is culture as well. Culture will build up. It'll just build up and build up and build up and build up until we get to the top. Once it caps out, we can do a culture power, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. I won't talk about that just now because it'll get too complicated, but you'll just have to kind of trust me. So uh, at the beginning of the game, I'm going to go scout because I want a free scout which is really nice. And I'd like to be able to go through jungle and deep forest because it'll give me an advantage over the AI. And then we press end turn and we let the game move forward and 250 years passes. So yeah, I know we're in 10,000 BCE, but we've already gone 250 <laughs> years forwards. And there we go. Oh, look, do you see a little exclamation mark and then a little eye opening. I love this. Instead of having a silly notification over on the right hand side of the screen, you actually get to see that your unit has discovered someone and the tribal camp has discovered me. So it's quite exciting. Is this better than Civ 6? Um, it's, uh, it's different. It's very different. There are actually some mechanics of this game that I really, really like. And that's me being quite genuine here. There is, there is a lot of potential in this game, a huge amount of potential in this game. L let me put it this way. What's the one thing about Civ 6 that draws you back over and over and over, right? This button, the end turn button. You press the end turn button and you want to keep pressing it. And you want to keep pressing it over and over and over because the game is quite addictive. This game does that to me. I practiced this game. I came off it. I had my evening. And all I could think about was playing more. And if that isn't a good thing about a game, I don't know what is. So... That's my, that's what I'm saying on that. <laughs> uh, you zoom in on the map. Seems like there's a lot to see. Yeah, there's quite a lot to see. And it's a very different map. So you have to be a little bit careful. No, those aren't horses. I don't think I've found horses. These, this is game. This is game. We'll talk about this in a little bit. I'm just trying not to sort of over explain things until we play it a little bit more. Have I ever played Humankind? I haven't. No, I never actually got around to playing it. I really do need to play it at some point. So, let me show you a tribal village. 
Here we go. If I go into the tribal village, something happens. A lost warband. A lost warband unit is hiking through the wilderness. They are weary and looking for help. And now I get to make a choice. So everything you do gives you a choice. Oh, thank you. Don't forget to like the stream. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, please like the stream. It actually really does help. That would be very sweet. So thank you. That would be very sweet. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't played Humankind. I, so I think I will like combat in Humankind because I played a lot of Endless Legend and I think the combat is very similar in that. So yes, I do need to do that. So there are quests. Not quests, sorry. I'm reading, reading chat and talking about this. You get an option, right? I can either take Warfare Experience, which is a resource that builds up on the left-hand side of the screen and lets me do things, or I can just spawn a new Warband. So at this point, I'm just going to, at the moment, take another Warband. And you see, I've got a second one now. I now have two units stood on the same tile. They did have 17 strength. Now they have 34. So I've basically just doubled my little army, which is wonderful. If I get into a scrap with barbarians now, I'm going to feel a lot more uh, secure, put it that way. Are there crabs in this game? I couldn't possibly confirm or deny that. <laughs> couldn't possibly confirm or deny that. Oh dear. I'd, I'd rather not think about that. <laughs> so we've gone a few turns through now. Oh, thank you. Sleepy Sofa Bear has brought coffee through it. You are very kind. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, Lord's work indeed. So we're just, we're, we're navigating through the map, exploring as much as we can. It's very, very much like Civ. You want to find as much as you can in the local area. These warriors, I don't really want to take them too far away from my land. One thing I'll say about this compared to Civ 6, okay? And this is something you need to remember if you play this game. Barbarians are absolutely brutal. They are absolutely brutal in this game. <laughs> Be warned, you need an army and you need a really, really uh, big army. Are there nested tooltips? Yes, it's a paradox game. Of course there are nested tooltips <laughs> everywhere. Um, Nicholas says, yeah, it's a very good sign for a game. It is. I, I wanted to play more. It was really good. Um, one thing I'll just note quickly, I haven't really talked about it, but as we've been going through, we're on turn four. Do you see here on the left-hand side? I have six government points now. Look at this. I'm gaining two per turn from Byzantium. Now, I can tell you now it's because of my government. My government gives me two government experience every turn. It's just a ticking thing that is given to my homeland. That means that I can do something with my tribal government. I can effectively upgrade it. And this is kind of a little bit like the civics that we would see in Civ 6, right? So as I get more government points, I can start to build improvements into my government. I've got a choice. Either I can take tribal farming, which gives my homeland, which is my capital, one extra food. Uh, or I can create a warband, raise a tribal army. This will give me another unit effectively for three. So there we go. Something glowing in the fog. It's probably my cursor. <laughs> It's me. It's me putting my cursor down. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Can Bob stick over your capital? I haven't had that problem yet, but I don't really want to find out that problem. The only problem with upgrading your government is this resource, this government experience. It's kind of, it's a valuable resource because there is another thing you can do. Spawn a settler. That costs you... Um, 30 government XP, right? And this is kind of the choice that I really like about Millennia. One of the problems I always have with Civ 6 is going wide is a necessity, right? You want to have as many civs as you can on the map or many cities on the map as you can. If you have 40 cities, you're going to do better than if you've got 10. It's just how it works, right? It's just how it goes. In this game, it's not as clear cut. Cities can get massive. They can get massive, they can get productive, they can get very complicated. And going wide is quite tricky. Because even if I spawn a settler, the settler doesn't give me a new city. It makes a vassal for me. And a vassal is kind of like a halfway city. I'll put that on the map, I'll make a new vassal, and then I have to 
integrate that vassal into my empire and then it becomes a city afterwards, right? So it, it's more complicated than just spamming cities on the map. It is very much a tall game. Much, much more of a tall game than Civ is. Absolutely. However, the good thing is that when you do create a vassal and then you make it into a city, these regions are all counted as capitals. So effectively, Byzantium is a capital of the region, not a capital of my empire. Does that make sense? So when I get multiple regions, I will have multiple capitals. And that'll that'll become more important later. But it's it's a it's it's a fun little tweak. One of the other things, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, I love me a tall game. Always hated having to pump out cities and sieve. I quite like pumping out cities and sieve. I won't lie. It's, <laughs> it's quite fun. Is the late game less of a slog than sieve? It's very different. Very, very different. I can't say too much because we're only allowed to play up to the end of age three today. Not that I think we'll uh, get that far. But uh, can you split Rome in half? Oh, no, you absolutely can. <laughs> this game can go terribly wrong. It can go terribly wrong. Um, so at the moment, what I'm going to do is my government, I could upgrade it and give myself one extra food. But do you remember what I said about food? I've already got five out of two. Right now, there's no, there's no benefit to me gaining that. And I could use government XP to give me a tribal army. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's, that's not a good ratio. Government XP is far too expensive. So we're going to hang on to that for a little bit, just for a little bit. And there you go. Here is my first scout. Do you see this? It moves faster. And more importantly, it sees a lot better. So we're going to actually send this in the other direction. And there's another tribal village. Perfect. We are finding more stuff on this map. My war bands, I'm going to not take them too far away from my land. We're kind of going to move back in. Make sure we're defending ourselves. When can we check it out ourselves? It's the link. Pinned link. Have a look. You can go and have a look. And now, ooh, now this is exciting. This is genuinely quite exciting. We have culture. Now, we've been earning two culture per turn the whole time because our government gives us two culture per turn. It's just one of the things that our government gives us. There is no culture tree in this game, but when you do get to a maximum culture, you can use a power. And there are multiple things that you can do. At the moment, our choices are quite slim. Local reforms effectively boosts a city like crazy. So we can just turbocharge a city for five turns and its yields go mad. Or we can create a town. And I think towns are, this is, this feels a little bit like humankind and, and, and endless legend and that sort of mechanic. But this is where regions and cities start to get a little bit complicated. Namely, because you can make them absolutely massive absolutely massive <laughs> so let me kind of show you how this works i'm going to create a town now byzantium at the moment it has you can see over here zero out of one we can support one town in this city but we haven't got any at the moment we are not gaining any extra land but i am slowly if i click on a tile do you see down here influence on a tile is 1.04 out of 15.15. This is really, 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 really kind of fiddly. But there is a resource in this game called Influence. I'm currently getting four of it per turn. What the game does is it counts how many tiles on the edge of your city. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tiles, right? It goes all the way around and it divides evenly. So each tile is currently getting about 0.33. And when it gets full influence, I will expand into it. It's quite complicated and quite messy. If I put a town down, all of the land around it begins to get really, really quickly integrated into the land. So it kind of sort of helps. The other thing I need to think about later is theming on towns, using the resources and making sure they all chain up. Because in this game, goods and resources are so much more important so much more important than in Civ 6, right? If I work a marble, I get a luxury. And luxuries, even if they hit amenities, that's all fine. In this game, if I pull something out of the ground, I start to use it as a good. And I can change that good. 
and improve that good and create really complicated goods that then are worth a lot more. So towns become a lot more interesting later. Now, this is where I'm going to build a town on this scrubland, right? Because around it is a lot of flat grassland, and that will be very good for food later on. So we'll, you'll kind of see why it's really good for now. I'm going to put a town down. It's got to be on the edge of your borders, and I'll pop it there. And you see, we've got a nice named town called Carolus. It's wonderful. Yes, we've got fishies. It's good. It's lovely. The, graphic, the graphics are unique. <laughs> but, but it's like, it's, it's a Civ 5 feel. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Do you have builders and stuff? No, there are no builders in this game. There is a resource we haven't talked about yet called improvement points, but is slowly building up in the bottom left. So, yeah, absolutely. And a road. Yep, it's a road. Roads are really important in this game because the one thing you've got to remember is that this game has huge cities. Absolutely huge huge cities how do towns compare to districts oh they're like they're whole other towns and cities within themselves they are way more complicated way more complicated um districts no there are tile improvements but there are more complicated tile improvements so let me show you a little bit right now if i click on this grassland you'll see there's a weed at the moment i am foraging it do you see on the tooltip at the bottom it says forage that means i'm working it unimproved I'm getting two food from it. Simple. Pretty simple. If I put a farm down, I dig up two wheat. And each wheat gives me four food. So this is why in this game, resources are really, really important. Because that one tile will go from making two food to eight food. Because the farm will give me two wheat and each wheat is worth four food. So putting a farm down is really, 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 really important. And you'll see I've actually got another wheat over here. So in terms of food, Byzantium is going to be one very plump little city. It's going to be absolutely Chonkathor. Chonkathor. Absolutely Chonkathor. Can I name the towns? That's a good question. I actually don't know if I can name the town. I don't think I can name the towns, you know. Oh, I was going to name that Chonk. Never mind. <laughs> so there's no districts. But there is a, a little something that towns start to do. Towns feed off the tiles around them. You'll see here that I've selected the town. Currently, it's giving me zero adjacency. If I improve the, tower, uh, the tiles around it, it will start to give me adjacency. So if I improve this wheat, it'll be next to the town, and it'll give me this resource called wealth. Now, wealth is on the uh, button here. Oh no, there is a rename button. Oh, thank you, chat. Thank you, Chonky Town. There you go. <laughs> you can rename the town. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I've seen it now. Wonderful. So if I improve this and put a farm down, Chonky Town is going to give me gold. So it's always worth improving the tiles around a town. The other thing that's quite cool as well is you see here, I've, I've selected a tile just on the right of Byzantium. I need 15 influence to get it. If I select a tile next to Chonky Town, I need two influence. So towns massively increase the rate, hugely increase the rate in which you claim tiles around your city. It's a huge difference. So definitely something to think about. Now at the moment, I've got a second population. Did you see my city grew? Now, now it gets a little bit more complicated because I need four food, but I'm only getting seven. So I've actually slowed down. I'm not growing at 200% speed anymore. It's 175. So I need to go and have a look and see, is it worth pulling a worker off the forest and putting it back onto grassland? Now, at the moment, I'm building things a little quicker. I'd rather do that. So I'm actually going to go into my government and pick up tribal farming, which I put off earlier. This gives me one food, uses some resource, my government resource, but it gives me food. And now I'm back to eight of four. So we've backed to growing at maximum speed. It's really, really cool. And yes, you can specialize the town only when it gets to level two, but we can specialize it a little bit later. And let me tell you, specialized towns, oh, they're good. They are very, very good. Now we need to build something else. 
Uh, there are some things we can do. Obviously, war bands we can use to fight. Cavalry will give me some more scouts. We can actually have a look. Walls are defensive. They just give you walls, stop people from attacking you. We don't need one of those at the moment. Town center gives me one government XP. So it, I will go from having two per turn to three per turn. So I will actually be able to get settlers out quicker if I build a town center, which is really cool. And a dolman gives me three influence and a one-time influence boost. So at the moment, I'm earning five influence per turn. This is the rate, and basically this is the rate in which my, my tiles grow. So influence is basically culture for tile growth. So if I build a dolman, if I go back to that, I will get enough influence to basically go boop, and all of my tiles around the city will grow. And you'll just have to believe me, Byzantium is going to get chonk. It's going to get absolutely huge. We're going to see a massive town around. So I think for now... I'm just going to pump out another cavalry. We're going to get a 3-1 from this research. Uh, and then we're going to work one more. But the map is all knowing. The map is all knowing. We need to find things. Now, we've got another tribal village over here. So we'll go and have a look and see what's uh, in there. Oh, nomads. I found a small camp of nomads. They explain that their leader is very wise and willing to share her knowledge with you. We can either... Listen to the advice and gain 10 government XP or gain 10 warfare XP. So warfare XP is used for all army things. And we'll see this a little bit later. Or we get 10 government XP and we start to get things like a better government. We can pull this down and have a quick look. Uh, yep, I, mean, I can't actually select it right now oh, because I've got a screen open. That's fine. <laughs> um, one of the things it does is it gains me settlers. So, yeah, government XP. It's a very valuable resource. Absolutely a very valuable. One millennia down. Yep, we're on 8,750 BC. We've already done our first millennia. There you go. So one thing I will say is warfare experience. We will go, we're going to go pretty, pretty aggressive in this game. The warfare experience is quite easy to get later on. So we're not so worried about it, right? We're, we'll, we'll get back to that at a later point. I'm just going to keep exploring around. Some more wheat out. That's cool. Going up onto these hills. Hills are quite difficult to see unless you zoom in. But they're kind of these grey things. And they're, they're quite difficult to, to, to see. <laughs> you just have to learn to spot them. It gets quite easy after a while. How does the map feel regarding size compared to Civ 6? Um, just as big, to be honest. Yeah, just as big. T took a thousand years to walk across the street. Yeah, that's about right. I guess people aren't really interested in expanding in the early stages of uh, human civilization, are they? They're just, they're just trying to exist. <laughs> they're just trying to exist. There's a lot of fish on the coast. There is some more camp. Um, which, which which we can use for... Uh, sorry, I'm going to read the camp as the improvement. <laughs> There's some more camp. <laughs> it's a very happy tale, this one. Um, there is some game that we can obtain some bone and some food from. That's quite exciting. We're looking for resources. If we see a resource, generally speaking, it's a good thing. Um, now, this war band is just going to keep exploring down. You can see we're going into some deep wood. We'll send the other scout out in this direction um does water adjacency give bonuses similar to civ no there's no such thing as uh water-based housing housing is a thing but not until we get a little bit bigger as a city so you'll see housing later but it's not yet a thing but there we go we got our three scout we can now go through deep woods and we've now unlocked the lookout building so we now have to pick another tech can we rename the cities? Yes, it's all renameable. Very much all renameable. I think I'm going to go for farming because farming unlocks farms, as you might expect. And we've got so much wheat, I would love to see an improvement to that wheat. So we're going to go and beeline farming now. And then we'll see how the game looks after that point. Um, you can see the tribal government. The next thing we could unlock, and this is interesting, so we could spend 14 points right now and unlock one improvement point. And we haven't spoken about improvement points yet, but this is another resource. So 
improvement points down here on the left. There are two types of production in this game. There is physical production, and production is used to build things in the city. So currently I've got three production per turn, and I am working this scout cavalry. So I'm, I'm using it to build that. But I've got another resource called improvement points. Now I'm only generating one per turn, but improvement points are outside the city. So production is inside the city, improvement points is outside the city. And improvement points are used to improve tiles. So at the moment, I've got nothing I can do to improve this tile because I haven't unlocked farming yet. But if I go over to, for instance, this scrubland, I select this tile, there's a button here called gather. If I click on that, I can build a hunting camp for six improvement points. Conveniently, I have six improvement points. Now, if I was to build a hunting camp, it would produce one meat on that tile. It would put a resource on that tile. So improvement points, yes, absolutely. Dagger turn, you've got it spot on. Improvement points are builders. You use them to make tile improvements effectively. So this hunting camp would give me free food on this tile in the form of one resource called meat. At the moment, the forage for this tile is one food. So six points effectively means that we go from one food to three food, which is quite cool. Now, I'm not going to do that because I know that farms cost 12 improvement points. They're a lot more expensive because they are more, well, I guess they're more difficult to put down. So we're going to save up to 12 points, but that is what you use improvement points for. So I could, in theory, improve my government and... I could give myself another improvement point per turn, which is really good. Or I could save up and go to plus one knowledge, which is also really good. At the moment, knowledge is our research, and we're only gaining two per turn. So plus one is 50% extra science. So <laughs> it's a huge deal. The one thing you need to remember in this game is that the Age of Stone sucks. You are going to do nothing. Tech is really cool in this game because the game speeds up really, 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 really quickly. And it makes things obsolete really, really cool. I hope the special eras let you do that kind of... Special eras, let me tell you, they're really cool. Because, yeah, it depends on what you're doing and it depends what, what, what you're basically doing. Does bear cavalry mean people riding on bears or bears riding on horses? It's clearly bears riding on horses. I mean, what a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> what a silly question. So, let's have a look at what we can do. I'm going to save my government points because I can spawn a settler. I would quite like at least one extra settlement out. It's kind of a little bit like Civ 6, right? You, um... Yeah, you, you just want to you want to get that second city out as quick as you can. And I want to see more mechanics. We, you know, we want to show off mechanics as best we can. So we'll, we'll go and have a look at that. Maybe you should hit that like because I'll give more people attracted. Yes. Everybody watching this now, please like the stream, please. <laughs> oh, 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 do you see that? It's barbarian. So this is just a typical barbarian. It's got seven attack and eight defense. So it's a little bit weaker than my warband, um, but it's a little stronger than my cavalry. So I don't want to move my cavalry anywhere near that. <laughs> it's scary. I'm going to move in the other direction. Uh, my scout can move three tiles, it can move two. So we're okay. I'm actually going to move my warband towards where I saw the barbarian, and hopefully we can go and deal with it before it gets too close to my land. And my other warband, I'm going to try emerge them so i've got a stack of three that would be cool what are those buttons on the scout ah there's all kinds of buttons on the scout so um just on a regular troop you've got this little fire that is called skip army it's basically the skip turn button and you've got guard basically you you press this and the unit stays put until they heal quite easy uh it's basically like fortify our barbarians is annoying in uh, as annoying in civ 6 let me tell you, barbarians in this game are worse. They are much worse than in Civ 6. They, 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 they have unions and leaders and heroes. You, yep, you get barbarian heroes. They are nasty. They are really, really nasty. Here's another scout. 
Um, this guy's kind of going to the south, so I'm going to send this one over to the north. And now we have a bit of a choice. One thing that I've noticed is that now I've got loads of armies. I've got a ar second army, which is two warbands. I've got a regular warband and then three scouts. The more units you have, the more gold you use. So currently I'm, I'm earning three gold and I'm losing three gold to unit upkeep. So I can't... I don't want to build any more units because I'll go bankrupt. And if I go bankrupt, I start generating chaos. And chaos... Well, you'll see chaos later. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see chaos later it's um it's quite scary uh so i'm not going to build any more units warbands cavalry no 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 instead what i'm going to do is make a choice between a town center which would give me more government experience which helps me settle quicker or a dolman which increases my borders now my borders are okay i haven't improved my you know the resources already in my borders so I think we're going to go for the town center instead. I think that's the better choice, but you will, we'll see, we'll see why. And um, we'll end turn and we'll see how this goes. 214 likes. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. So there was a combat there. So the barbarian moved. It saw my warband, it attacked it and I won. Now, <laughs> this is a bit that's relatively amusing, right? This game does have a nostalgic feeling to it, okay? The graphics are definitely noughties, early, early teens. Um, feels a little bit like Civ V. It's a little bit retro. Wait until you see the combat animation. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it play out for you. And then you can see, you, you judge this as to how you feel <laughs> this has been put together. <laughs> So I'm on the right, I've got two warbands, and the barbarians are on the left. And you can see they are running backwards and forwards, and they are hitting each other with sticks. Beautiful. And I won. Huzzah! <laughs> it really does have a Naughties vibe, doesn't it? It feels very 2004. Yep, 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 yep. Here is a Might and Magic 2. Yep. Did I fall backwards in time? <laughs> so, I don't know. I honestly don't know if this is a placeholder or not. Let's assume that it's a placeholder. What you just saw is how battles play out in this game, okay? So, what happens is that your army stacks up on one side, the other army stacks up on the other side, and then it goes at it. There's nothing you can do outside of army formation. So, you set up the army, but it fights for you. Can you skip the fight animations? Yes, I, I, I showed you this deliberately. You can skip through it. You don't have to click on it. This is totally optional to, to look at it. I just thought, you know, yes, it shows you the rolls. That's effectively it. This is a paradox game, right? Paradox games are full of secret dice rolls. That's just what they do, RNG. And you can see it in this game. And oh, Ken, you've got it absolutely right the gameplay and the mechanics of this game are spot on they are really really good this game is a lot of fun to play a huge amount of fun to play do the graphics let it down a little bit but the actual core game is amazing and that's why i'm actually like i would prefer it was that way around does that make sense i feel like if you've got a good core game you can fix everything else pretty easily it's the game that matters. It's, it's how engaging a game is. It's how well put together a game is. Whether or not you could stitch together an entire game and it keeps you engaged that whole time. I think it's got that. So wait a minute. You can combine, say, a warband and an archer into the same army. Absolutely. And then what starts to happen, and we'll see this in a little bit, is you have lines. So you have like a, a forward line, a support line, and then a range line. And depending on what your formation is, Enemy melee units, for instance, have to hit your melee units before they can get through to your archers. And this is where it gets really interesting, because if I go onto the warband, you can see that. You see at the bottom, combat modifier, two times attack versus cavalry. So, in this game, a bit like in Civ Six, different types of units are more effective against others. So we've seen it in Civ Six, right? A warrior 
is strong against the Spearman. And you get, what, plus five combat strength? In this game, it is much more extreme. It is much more extreme. Yeah, give it time for the graphics, you know how development goes. Absolutely. That's kind of my opinion on this. They can always be touched up later. The gameplay is really, really, really good. That's why chess still works. You've got it spot on. I'm really, really pleased you're all seeing it like I do. The actual game is really, really, really good. If you merge Warbands and Scouts into a unit, do they have two or three movement? They'd go to two. So you can, within a turn, units can be formed and disbanded at will, but each unit keeps its own movement. So you could move half of the unit and then you could split it and then the quicker units could then finish their movement. But otherwise you're limited to the slower unit. So... Yeah, so you could have a frontline unit with an archer and a cavalry for a base army. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can mix it as you want. You can mix it as you want. So in this game, if I came across a cavalry, my warband is twice as powerful. Two times damage. That's a huge increase. And it gets more extreme than that. If I have a look at archers, so this is what I'm about to unlock once I get defenses. Do you see that at the bottom of an archer? Combat modifier versus line... A warband is a line troop. It's like a line inventory. Three times attack. Archers do triple damage against warriors. So if you try and take warriors against archers, you will get destroyed. So unit formation in this game is really, really important. Really, really important. And you need to keep an eye on it. That's kind of why I like this. It's it's good. So there are more barbarians. I'm actually going to just move my warband. Actually, no, I'm going to leave it put. I'm going to just heal up a second. There's another barbarian there. Um, let's move out. We've got another tribal village. Oh, here we go. This is a good choice. Either I can take five production back to Byzantium, or I can take 50 gold. I'll tell you now, I'd rather have production. 50 gold is not much. <laughs> and there's not much I can do with it right now. I'd rather take the production. So then we've got six turns on my building. If I do that, bam, it's just shaved two turns off that. that you'll see a couple of like little messages here this is an early access game the combat you know the logs are you know they, they will pop up from time to time it's just one of those things so you actually have to be mindful which army is attacking yeah and you need to look at the barbarians so right now these are just barbarians these are all line units but they won't always happen no it wasn't permanent production that's kind of like overflow production so we just put that into the build of our town center. So it's just like one turn's worth. So it would be, uh, we were earning three. So yeah, 1.66 turns of production. That's absolutely it. Yep, 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 yep. You got it. You got it in one. So because we've gone to three pop, we need 10 food. So we're not quite growing as quickly as we could be. If I have a look at this. Honestly, messing around between forest and grassland right now, meh. I think I'd probably rather have a little bit of extra production and a little less food. Puts an extra turn's worth of growth on the city. Gives me another production. Let's me build things faster. But once we start getting improvements, you will see it will get much quicker. Much, much quicker. And this is where I think the strength of the game really comes in. Um, right, let's move on to that hill. Mountains. And then I'll show you something else that happens. Oh, 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 yeah, do you see that? So the barb, let me have a look. The barb went after my uh, my scout there, and my scout took a lot of damage. <laughs> the scouts are really, really weak. Oh, and here we go. So there's a barb here, a barb here, and this is a barbarian encampment. And in barbarian encampments in this game, they count as little towns. They have walls, they have guards, they are very strong very strong you can't just walk about you know like a, a warrior or warband in and destroy it immediately yeah 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 yeah. these are much much stronger um and this is where we can have a look at some of the other things that scouts can do there's other buttons and it's a little bit unfortunate because i very much did want to use one of these buttons uh landmarks do you see here there is something called undiscovered this is a natural feature on the map this is some sort of natural wonder it's uh it could be like a giant mountain it could be a fabled natural wonder it could be something like a giant named jungle i don't know what it is until a scout and it has to be a scout it can't be 
a combat unit. It has to be a scout. And this is why scouts are actually really, really important in this game. Because they have unique actions, right? They do unique things. Uh, the scout can do a thing called discover landmark. Now, if it discovers the landmark, I get a load of experience. And I get another little drop down like we see when we go into the tribal villages. It gives me something. Which is really, really cool. Uh, we can also do something called regroup. Now, this is one of my favorite mechanics in the game. I have been earning this. Uh, exploration XP. Now, exploration XP is stuff that I get given as my scout does things. So, my scout earlier... Which one was it? Was it this one? I think it was this one. Went into a tribal village. And it earned me some exploration experience. Now, I can spend that exploration experience on scouts. So you can convert experience that your scouts have earned into more scouts, which is really cool. But you can also spend it. So I have a button here, a really cool button that says regroup. I can pay five exploration XP and my scout returns to my capital. It uses the entire turn, but it effectively teleports to safety. So I can press that button, spend some experience and it goes boop <laughs> and it doesn't die. Which is really cool. There's also another thing. Survivalist. I can play five experience and I can heal half of its health immediately. Which is really, really cool. Um, you notice that barbarians don't do zone of control. I think zone of control is a thing in this game. But it's not as prominent. And the scouts can definitely move through it. Which is, you know, one of those things. Now, in terms of movement, I don't think this barb has enough movement to get into this deep forest. So I'm going to take a punt and I'm going to move my scout in to that tile there. And I'm going to use some of my experience to show you the mechanic. I'm going to press this button and go boop and it heals itself. So I use some of my experience and I got some healing. That means if they do attack me, I will survive it. But I really, 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 really would love it if I can discover that wonder. That would be awesome. And I'm going to move my other warband down in this direction because I want to form my armies together. I want them to, I want them to be one huge army. And actually, viewers, as you're watching now, I'm going to need a hand because when I put all three units in, it's going to create a, a maximum-sized army, and I want to name it something. I need a cool Roman name. What what does my what does my um what should I call it? Let me know. So moving my scouts around now. Let's have a quick look. Oh, another tribal camp. Amazing. And you've got Byzantium is still working this. Legio Invicta. Legion. Who ate all the pixels? Chonky Town. <laughs> Vini Vidi Vici. Titus Polo. Farticus. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> oh, Legio Ursica. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. I think I'm going to name it that. Bigger stickers. <laughs> Someone's been watching Monty Python. Oh, dear. I like that. That's really good. Right. So I'm going to move this warband there. I'm going to move this one onto the same tile. And you see, boop, now all three are in an army. What should we call it? Yeah, you know what? I, call, I can't help but call it Legio uh, what did you call it? Ursica. Uh, yes. Yes, my first named army. Russell Crows. <laughs> oh, dear. So you'll see, I've been building up government XP. I could increase my government and give myself some more science, but I'm saving up for a Sattler. That's one thing we are doing. So you'll see me accumulating this. But otherwise, my scouts are just out and about. Oh, there's a barb. The barb will attack me, but I can take the tribal camp. So I'm going to do it. Oh, mysterious village. Here we go. A small village looks very old. The people here have settled atop ancient ruins, holding secrets unknown to your people. Do I take whatever looks most valuable and take 10 exploration XP? Or do I wonder at what the carvings mean and take 10 government XP? I'm absolutely going to take government XP. Because now, 
I've got enough government XP to go in and spawn Settler, which is really, 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 really valuable. And now I can click that and I have a Settler. A Settler counts as a unit on a map. Um, and there is no such thing on this game as civilian units teleporting back to your land if they die. They die. <laughs> so I've got to be really careful with the Settler. Um, and I've got to actually look and see where I want to settle. Now, the main thing you've got to do is try and find as many resources in one place as you can. And currently, there is some pasture. There, there is uh, some game. We've got quarry, which is marble. Marble's really good, actually. That's a very good resource. Sheep is quite good. There's a double marble over here. There's some wheat. I'm tempted to settle over in this direction. And one of the things you've got to change your mind on how it works in this game is cities get a lot bigger. So you don't settle cities within four tiles of each other. If anything, seven tiles of each other can be a bit close. <laughs> in one of the one of the practice games, uh, I managed to get a city very big and it was working like fifth fifth ring tiles. So yeah, you wanna you wanna be a bit careful on that. Um and uh, you'll also notice I lost a population. So spawning a settler did lose me a population. So that's something you do need to remember. Didn't they sing Mrs. Jones? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, dear. All right. Oh, yeah, here we go. My scout. So undiscovered. Should we discover what it is? We'll press the landmark button and bam, we have discovered the landmark. It gives me some experience. It lets me discover a landmark. This is really handy for later. We'll have a have a look later. And it gives me 10 combat experience. Oh, so combat experience is kind of like experience that a unit gets. It's a bit like levels. You don't promote in this game so much, but they are kind of a bit like levels. How is this game in regards to tall versus wide? Um... What's the best way of explaining this one? Yeah, plus one builds charge, yeah. Tall versus wide. This game favors tall a lot more. Tall is much, much more important in this game. Much, much more important. You can't settle wide quickly. I mean, you can see it's turn 11 and I've been saving up experience to unlock this settler. Cities are really difficult to put down. So you have to go tall. It really, really, really favors tall. And yes, it is costly. It's not... Um, you can't, you, you, you can get past the cost. It's not a problem. So you can play as wide as you want and, and you can go really wide with combat, but it's just, yeah, exactly. It's a different, it's a different matter. Oh, look, it's called Borneo Rainforest. There we go. We discovered what it was. It's a rainforest. Let's have a look at this tribal camp. Oh, do I want five knowledge research, which would be two and a half terms worth of research. Or do I want improvement points? Improvement points are not worth as much because you can get these really easily later. I'm going to take knowledge and we're going to boost through. And I now have farming unlocked. So we've done it. So we can now get plantations. We can now get farms and we can now build a food building. The next one is I've got a choice. We can uh, tribal elders, which will give me knowledge which is really good. That would that that building, that council building would increase my science by 50%. That's really really big. Defenses would give me a three archer, which is a huge combat buff because you've already seen the archers have triple strength against regular barbarians. Very powerful. Or we go workers and unlock clay pits and give myself some improvement points. I think I'm going to go defenses. Do natural wonders give any benefits? They do. Not right now, but they do. I know a live stream. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So one thing as well that you should notice is just see this one's four turns and this one is three turns. Tribal Elders is four, Defenses is three. If I have a look over, you'll see minus 10% from other nations. There are six players on this map and two of them have already researched defenses. There is a lot of rubber banding in this game and it's really, 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 really good. It's really, really, really good. So if somebody has researched something, it makes it easier to research for everyone else in the game. 
And if you are the only person not to have researched something, it's about half cost. And it gets quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Especially once you go into the Age of Bronze, going back and researching Age of Stone tech becomes even quicker than that. So it's really, really cool. I can see some people have gone to fences. It's cheaper. For me, that works nicely. I'm going to unlock the archer. Wouldn't I go bankrupt with another unit? Yes, that maintenance would take me past my gold upkeep, but I do have a little bit of gold in the bank. And I've got a trick for that. I've got something that will help. So don't worry too much. Don't worry too much. We've, we've got something we can do. I think. Hopefully so. <laughs> so. I'm just thinking what I could do. What I could do is I could regroup one of my scouts, teleport it back to my capital, and then use it to escort the Sattler so that it doesn't immediately die. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually, it's more expensive to be the tech leader. It's more expensive. Yeah, that's, that's the mechanic. And it's a really, really good mechanic, actually. I quite like it. I didn't see any barbarians in this, but I'm, I'm just, I'm going to breathe it. We're going to go one tile at a time, and I'm going to breathe it. You know? I'm gonna, I'm just going crazy. We're gonna just... <laughs> oh dear. What was the medal icon? Aha. Now, this is something. This is something, and this is where warfare experience comes in. So warfare experience I've been gaining from battles, right? I can use that warfare experience to buy volunteers. So I can get three units. So at the moment I can pay 25, and it gives me a three war band. And this gets more and more and more... Uh, valuable the more tech I unlock. Or I can use it to promote a unit to a leader. Leaders are a funny old sort of unit. If I have a leader, it is more powerful than the unit I upgraded it from, and it applies a percentage buff to all of the other units in that army. So if you have one leader, it makes all of the other units more powerful. So it's really, really, really good. However, once you make a leader, it can never be upgraded after that point. You make it obsolete. So normally you could go from a warband and then the, the next uh, upgraded unit is called a spearman, which will unlock in the next era. If I make a warband leader, I can never make it into a spearman leader. It's stuck at that point forever. So it's kind of like a trade-off. You make yourself a really powerful unit for that era and that's it. <laughs> yeah, sleepy sofa there. She is, bless her, she is editing, editing alongside God's work. <laughs> so it's like you're really good at being a scout. Weirdly, no, because leaders are actually a separate type of unit. So if I upgrade a scout, it becomes a combat unit. It's not a scout anymore. So if I wanted to actually use it for scouting, I've shot myself in the foot. Weirdly. Oh, right. Yep. So we knew that was going to happen. We knew that was going to happen. We took the tribal village. The scout got hit. Um, there is another barbarian here. There's a barbarian here. There's a lot going on. I'm going to move my warband towards the settler now, actually. Let's see where the settler can go because the settler's faster. It can move a little quicker. Um, could I take that unit in the out of armies? Yes, you can. I'll show you that in a second. Um, oh, Justin James. Thank you so much. Love your videos. I've been watching for years now. Justin, can you do me a favor? I'll be watching the comments. Um, we're going to be founding a, a, a vassal state, a second city. I need a good Roman name or a good Ursa uh, Ryan name that we can name the city. I'll, uh, I'll let you pick. As a thank you. So we can move the saddle up. We're going to move it out uh, like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the warband, just select it down here and move it onto that tile. So I've effectively moved it from one army to another. So now my settler is escorted. Bursa Ryan. I clanned him. <laughs> it's the pressure now, Justin. It's got to be something good. It's got to be something good. <laughs> uh, can we find mammoths? I haven't found any mammoths. <laughs> Justin, is your answer LMAO? <laughs> be careful what you type. <laughs> I might just take you at your word. Oh, dear. Um, 
<laughs> go on, go on. I'll let you pick something better. Um, I'm going to move my unit there. I'm not going to engage the Barbarian any faster than I have to, but I just don't want it going to attack this unit. And this scout is just going to, yeah, hunt through the jungle. Oh, there's another tribal camp. That's all good. Um, the scouts actually, we, we've got semi-decent luck with the scouts. Normally by this point, all of my scouts have died multiple times. Last practice game I had, uh, they died very quickly and very ferociously. Um, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good at all. So Byzantium needs to make something new. I could make a food stockpile, which gives the city itself some food. Which would be a good thing. But food is not going to be my problem. Trust me, this wheat will not make it. It's not a problem anymore. I'm just waiting until next turn and it won't be a problem anymore. So we need to do something different. I think I'm going to, so either I could build a lookout, which means that my capital has more visibility. Crab Clantium. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is wonderful oh dear um so we've got one exploration so that would give us one exploration point so this is the resource that scouts are getting for us our capital could start making it which would be really cool i think i'm gonna go for the dolmen because i want to expand my borders quicker because i want chonky town to grow oh look do you see a couple of tiles have already grown out it's happening crab clantium it is i know i actually do quite like that that's fair <laughs> That is fair. Um, I tell you what, this marble is pretty good. It gives me two marble per resource. Oh. So what I want, I'm going to actually put a uh, town down on this tile. I'm going to put a town down on this tile. So I want my city to be two tiles away from it. So I'm actually going to go over to that pasture. That's where I'm going to go and settle my state. And then I'm going to put the town down there, I think. Crabs are our vassals now. Oh, do we really want this? Are you sure you know what you have started? Oh, another tribal village. Very good. We are getting good luck with this. Oh, there's a barb. Ah, I should, should have clicked on that. That would have been a clever thing to do there. Uh, and another tribal village. Oh, my goodness. Look at this luck. Huzzah. Love it. Oh, here we go. Culture power. So the culture has filled up again. The culture has filled up again. <laughs> you love Ursa's sound of wonder and pleasure. Woo! <laughs> oh dear. So, what are we going to do? I can't create a town in Byzantium right now. Because I've run out of town slots. I can only make one out of one. I could make the yields of Byzantium better. But... I don't think it's worth it right now. I could give myself a Eureka, which would mean that I would get five extra knowledge. So that would instantly finish this research for me and we could immediately start to go into the Age of Bronze. So that's quite cool. Or I could raise an army. And if I raised an army, I get two, three units immediately. That's tempting. I think I'm going to raise an army. Yeah, Eureka, Eureka is good. Um, it gets worse the more you use it. So if you use it twice in a single age, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So the thing about this game is it doesn't like you picking the same things multiple times. You, it likes variety. Changing things up is always really good. I think I'm going to raise an army that can then raise. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to raise an army to then do some raising. Um, so I'm going to do that. Bam. An army. That's really cool. And now I've got 12 points, which means I can finally put my farm down on this tile. So I select the tile, press gather, and then bam, there goes the farm. The farm is now on that tile. Now that's done two things for us here, which is really, really cool. Firstly, it has now given us a farm tile. One worker is now working two wheat, and each of these wheat gives me four food. So this one tile now gives me eight food rather than two. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. <laughs> I love how he says crisps. Really? <laughs> oh 
Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Next time you can raise a, levy, a leggy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. This is Millennia, William. This is a Millennia game. It's, it's actually really good fun. It's really, really fun. So I have, I have just absolutely gluttonized this city. And Chonky Town now has one improved tile next to it. So if I now look at Chonky Town, do you see down here? One adjacency, the town adjacency, plus one wealth. So I'm now gaining an extra gold per turn, which means I can now afford my new army. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. I told you I had a strategy. Told you I had a strategy. So I'm going to leave you there for now. The earth reduction is real. Yep. Oh, the scout has been attacked. And oh, I just uh, took a bit of damage from that warband there. But now I can do a thing. I can do a thing. Oh, the settler managed to avoid combat there. If we actually have a look, you can see in the combat, the settler is in it, which is a little bit worrying. I mean, we all just have to salute the combat. Oh my God. Whoa, did the settler just attack? The settler does damage. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Justice for the settler. Oh, that's the, I didn't even know that happened. That's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Right. A settler cannot move and make a city in the same turn, but I haven't moved. So here you go. And we had the city name. I've got to go and uh, put that in right now. Oh, no, I can't spell crab. <laughs> Actually, I love that. A little bit of a glitch there. Um, the WSAD keys still work when I'm typing in a city name. <laughs> so the, the map was moving around. <laughs> Crab Clantium. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, there we go. Uh, is freshwater something to consider when settling? No. No, this is very much like Civ Five. Um, cities are purely based on the tiles around them. And they have nothing to do with freshwater. It's worth keeping in mind that. The other thing worth keeping in mind is, you see, on the right-hand side, I have regions and I have vassals. Regions are cities. These are normal cities, big cities. I can do stuff with them. They're mine. Vassals are not mine. They're kind of like half mine. They pay me a tribute. And I'll be honest, the tribute is rubbish. <laughs> At the moment... Crab Clantium is paying me 0 0.3 wealth, uh, 0 0.02 improvement points per turn. So it will give me one point in 50 turns. Huzzah! <laughs> and it's giving me 0 0.06 culture and knowledge. So I think that's what, 16 turns, 17 turns? It's useless. However, it is not a drain on my empire at all. Um, no road between the cities. It will appear later with tech. As it begins to get integrated, the road will appear. And it begins to get very, very useful because you can move troops across the map a lot quicker. A lot quicker. They are just worse city-states. Kind of. Yes. But what it's going to do is it's going to start integrating. I can... I think at the moment integration is one point every turn. After 15 turns, it will then give me the option to pay some government XP... A bit like I use government XP to make a settler, and I can integrate it into my empire. And at that point, it becomes a region. So it's uh, it's there. What do rivers do? Um, I think rivers you can use for things like dugout. No, dugout can use uh, uh, their, their actual coastal units. Um, they provide a defensive bonus. It's difficult to move across them. But apart from that, it's difficult to say. Oh no, I realized my army, it, it, uh, it, it unnamed itself. No, that's a thing. I've got to be careful about moving armies in and out. What was it called? It was a uh, Legio um, Ursium, wasn't it? Is there a holding systems like in CK3? I actually don't know. I don't know much about CK3, I'll be honest. You can already see mods making this an ancient classical era game already. Wait, wait. This game is really good later. Trust me. 
It's very, very good. Watermill building? Yeah, possibly. That is possibly uh, a thing. Um, I need a chat. I need another name for my second army. I need another second army name. And do you see all of these barbarians? There's a camp just outside Crab Clantium. There's a camp up there. This is where all the barbs are coming from. So I'm going to move my second army out. And we're going to go and fight the barbs a little bit. And you can see my scout uh, gives me another option. Lost archers. Do I want warfare experience or do I want to spawn an archer? I will absolutely spawn an archer. That is brilliant. And then I'm going to uncouple them by selecting the unit and then moving them out, which just means that it sort of separates themselves. And I'm going to move it back towards my other units. Uh, and Legio Ursium is going to just heal up for a second. Um, or is it? No, it's just going to it's going to kill this barb first and then it'll heal up, which will be good. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Dead. Does this game have multiplayer? It will have multiplayer, but I don't think it's turned on. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Japan. We found a Japanese cavalry. Now, diplomacy is a little bit more stripped down in this game. Um, this is what diplomacy looks like. So at the moment, you can see that Japan has one region, so one big city. Uh, they're in the Age of Stone. So my power is 127. Their power is 124. If we can declare hostilities, that means we can now fight in neutral territory. Um, we can propose open borders. There is diplomacy, but we can't do diplomacy yet because we haven't sent them an envoy. So we don't know what diplomacy is. Um, yeah, diplomacy is a little bit more stripped down. Put it that way. Oh, that is nice coffee. Lovely. Fighting screen seems like it's something that will get quite old if you play this a lot. Maybe, but it's more complicated when you get more unit types. Um, it does get a little bit more complicated. Temple, a massive temple pyramid lays before you. Its contents and purpose are unknown. Do I want exploration XP or do I want warfare XP? Now, at the moment, warfare is more important because warfare I can use to do military things like heal units and stuff. If I actually show you... I haven't unlocked any of them yet. Ah, it's an XD or a thing. Okay, we'll talk about that in a bit then. Getting ahead of myself. Getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's continue going down here. Oh, it's Japan. We have found them. Okay. Choose technology. We've now got three techs. So now I can start pushing to the Age of Bronze. I think it's worth pushing ahead in terms of age, and then going back to fill this in later because you get a discount when everyone else has actually done it for you. So, we'll do it. Good effort, Matt. Uh, work tomorrow, it's 1.32 a.m. Oh, Matt, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just think of it like this. You can always watch this stream later at work. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. That is huge. I still have to see where all the units are on the map. Units, you kind of, you see the green bars and you see the little icons, but the you can see all your armies on the right-hand side. So there are easier ways of seeing it, but it's uh, it's certainly a little bit, a little bit zoomed out, yes. There we go. We've met Japan. It would have told us if we hadn't have spotted it. I just spotted it because I have the eyes of a hawk. <laughs> the eyes of an absolute hawk. Um, and there we go. We keep seeing... Do you see, every time I see a unit, it gives me a nice big notification as I'm moving around. So, good to know. Resources are easier to see than the armies. I guess resources are bigger when you think about it. <laughs> so Byzantium is actually on 17 food because of the absolute chonky nature of this wheat farm. So it's going to continue growing at about 5 million miles an hour. So that's really, really good. We can leave this city alone. Vassals... There's nothing we can do. We just have to leave this for 15 turns. Eventually, we can take control of that. But until then, we can't. Oh, Age of Bronze. Look, do you see? Greece has made 20% progress to my 13.9. So Greece is actually going to hit the Age of Bronze before me. Interesting. Doesn't make a difference now, but it will make a difference later. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Uh, Lego Arsenal. What I'm going to do 
is I'm actually going to take this unit and move it out of Lego Ursinum and just keep it in Crab Clantium, heal it up. This unit, um, oh, every time you move it, it, re it unnames the armies. That's a bit of a glitch. Uh, I have to remember that. So this army is going to meet up with my archer and I'm going to have an archer and two warriors. That's going to be it. So in a way, you need two settlers for a new city. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but it's more complicated than that, because if you conquer a city, say this city down here, Japan's capital, if I was to conquer it, it would become a vassal, not a region. So taking a city from somebody else effectively gives you halfway, if that makes sense. So it counts as one of the settlers. Don't know if I'm explaining myself properly there, but that's all fine. Aha! Uh -huh. This is something we haven't seen yet. This is effectively a city-state. This is a minor nation. It's quite well defended. It's got three troops, three city militia, which are pretty tough. And it's got walls. So this is kind of like a neutral defended city. I can either send an envoy to it later and convince it to become a vassal for me, so diplomatically, or I can conquer it which would effectively give me a vassal via force. So, you know, options. But we'll remember that because that could be a good acquisition of the Roman Empire later. Oh, Cabbage. Thank you so much. Oh, that is lovely. I'd love to see an early thoughts summary video from this on you. It looks promising. Yeah, maybe I should. It's very different sort of content to what I do normally. But I feel like I've got a pretty decent... Um, Pretty decent set of thoughts on this game. So, yeah. Yeah, I probably should do that. I should do that. Could you call your second army Legion uh, 9 Hispania after the Lost Legion? You know what? That is a bit of Roman lore I have no idea about, but absolutely I can. Yeah. Legion. Um, i got to use the Roman digits. Roman numeral, sorry. Hispania. There you go. And then... These these armies now forever will will never ever get moved about because <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep renaming them. Ah, uh, dear. Speaking of, speaking of, um, let's move that archer there, move you to that, and then next turn we'll form those together into something wonderful. The legion is making its way over. There's some barbs trying to escape through here. Can't be having that. Dit oh dit oh dim. Do city-states give unique bonuses, or are they just three vassals? Um, they, they kind of vassals. If you conquer them or if you diplomatically acquire them, you get pop-up events like we've been seeing with tribal villages. So there is a little bit of mechanic to them, but it's not quite, um, it's not quite what we've seen before. It's something different, something new, something fresh. Um, is there going to be another Ursa multiplayer stream sometime soon? Yeah, I need to do one of those, but um, I have got nothing in my diary. Not yet. Maybe I should. Oh, Tall Mountain. So here we go. So this is a natural wonder, just like Borneo that we found. But Japan, unfortunately, has already found it first. So I can't discover that. This is why getting scouts out at the beginning of the game is quite helpful. Do, uh, can towns be built on resources? No. No, you can't build over resources. You have to build on a tile that has nothing else on it. Tis the rule. Tis the rule. Okay. Do you want to see how effective archers are? So, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, go. Mart, have you missed much so far? Well, you can have a look at some combat. This is the Ninth Legion. And they're going to attack just a regular little barbarian here. And this is going to be quite brutal because my archers do three times damage. Did you see that? 23 damage they just did against that warrior. So my line inventory, these war bands, hold the line, and the archers just decimate. I killed that unit with almost no damage myself. So this is where unit composition is very, very important. And it gets more important as more unit types appear later. Or a better word, maybe to identify them, see them as undiscovered. Yes, um, you can see them as undiscovered, and scouts discover them effectively. And after that point, once they've been discovered, they're discovered for everyone. So there's nothing you can do. Uh, I could try this. Move you into that. Hey, if I move into the named unit, then it counts. That's fine. Right. Let's try fighting against 
a barbarian camp. Do you see here? Combat prediction. Win percentage zero. Lose percentage zero. Draw 100. It's because it's pretty well defended. And that's because we have walls. Walls block melee troops. My archers can fire over the top of them. But my melee troops have to bash the walls down before I can get in. But their units can leave the walls at any point. And here you can see... There's a little bit of a problem because the archers don't always attack the unit they should. They're doing it quite a lot. But there is a mechanic in this game that's like a sort of intel mechanic. So it, it's whether or not units fire at the most perfect opportunity or the, most, the, the best unit that they could be attacking. And if you've got a leader in, you're more likely to do that. I think. I think that's how it works. So do you see... There's only a certain amount of combat, so I think it's three turns of combat, and then it stops. So at the moment, this is technically classed as a draw. The barbs are pretty much defeated, so another attack should destroy the encampment, but that technically was a draw. I realize I walked straight past this encampment. Ah, yeah, that's why this, this barb is really annoying. Um, what could I do? Move onto the hill. I'm going to use a little bit of experience to... Go survivalist, heal myself, yep, and then we're going to try and get that, because I want the tribal village. And then we're going to go to that. I'm following a Japanese scout, that's never good. It means that anything I find, it's already dealt with, probably, which is really annoying. <laughs> never mind. Ah, oh, here we go. Right, now this is just a spare warband. Um, I'm just going to leave it in that city for now. Nothing I can really do. I don't want to send it out by itself. Um, ah, the scout got pushed back, which is really annoying. And I can still... Oh, I can still skip past. There you go. And uh, go like this. So what do I want to do? Do I want five culture or do I want five knowledge? Artifact. The village is built around a large stone monolith. Ooh. What am I going to do? Sadly got to go, but great stream. Thank you, Cabbage. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. There'll be a VOD afterwards, or a live VOD that goes up, so you'll be able to see it later. Fingers crossed. So, do I want knowledge, or do I want culture? At the moment, I'm just putting a ton of science into just unlocking this age. Culture is really good. You can unlock multiple things from it, that's true. But I want to keep up with Greece here, and I want to unlock this new age as soon as possible, because getting to the new age fast gives you a lot of benefits. Because tech gets a lot better as you go through the game. So I'm going to go knowledge this time. But I agree, culture probably would have been quite good. That, that also would have been a very good choice. Um, and uh, as you can see, some barbs have actually come out of the encampment. But I'm going to ignore them. And I'm going to attack again. Because they should have just stayed inside the walls. There you go. The uh, warriors are now dead. And technically I haven't defeated the barb camp until I've also blown the walls to bits. Do you see how the archers do almost no damage against walls? That's uh, one of those things. Technically, the archers get the kill. But uh, what are you going to do? And there we go. Camp in the world. These barbarians knew their lands well. They're difficult to fight in their own territory. So either I can study their own behavior and gain some warfare experience. Or I can gain some exploration experience. Hmm... Now, the later in the game we go, the more the different types of experience does different things. I have less exploration experience at the moment. So I'm tempted to go for that. But warfare experience is really good, especially when we unlock better troops. So I think I'm going to go warfare. But exploration also would have been pretty good. And now we're going to go for the next barb camp. The more barb camps I kill, the safer my land is. So that's absolutely something I want to do. Righty-ho. Yeah, that scout died. What are you going to do? And a little animation here because I believe Greece has unlocked the new age. So what they've done is they have set the age for the game. Because they hit it first, they're the ones that decide what age 2 is. Unfortunately for them, there's only one choice on age 2. It has to be the age of bronze. But from this point, it's more interesting. So here we go. In the age of bronze, we get new national spirits. So this is really cool. 
Vassals integrate two times faster during the Age of Bronze, so uh, Crab Clantium is going to be good. Barbarian warlords may appear. This is really bad. This is where barbarians start to get very, very tricky. Innovation and chaos events appear. This is really interesting. It's a mechanic we're going to see in a second. And trade and diplomatic envoys are available. It's two new types of domain that we're going to find. So lots of fun stuff for us to have a look at. All of which we'll unlock in a second. Um, these barbs, well, we'll just, there's one stood in a forest and I've got some archers, which means I can kill them pretty easily. They actually have some extra defense because they were stood in woods. So I'm doing less damage to them. So this is where you can see defensive terrain does make a difference. Kind of. A little bit. But we still win easily. Hands down. Great to actually catch a live stream. Oh, I already have us to blame for all the time I spend watching Twitch. <laughs> I'm not on Twitch. You should come over here. It's, it's good fun. Is it Greece's national spirit? Uzu. <laughs> yeah, just constant Uzu. Yeah, absolutely. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Right, which way do we explore? I'm going to just... I want to go far away from my lands. Um, desert is really difficult to travel over in this game. It's really, really slow. I've just found a tribal village now. We've got really, really, really good on scouts at the uh, on this game. I'm very happy with this. Very happy. So you can see now integration, we're going to be getting two per turn. So Crab Clantium, I'm hoping, will be part of us soon. Soon. There we go. Age of Bronze. We've unlocked it. So, we can do a few things now. We can get Diplomacy and Engineering. Uh, we've got new National Spirits, and I'll show you those in a second. And we have a new trading system. Ah, oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right. Age 2. Now we can do this. We can pick a domain. Left click to choose a National Spirit. This is where it gets a little bit complicated, because we've got lots of options. But there's one thing you need to know about. Each of these represents a different domain experience. Do you see this? These are all exploration. These are all warfare. And then these are two that we haven't seen so far. Engineering and diplomacy. So what we will end up doing is using our experience to do things just like we've been unlocking for government. So with tribal, I can unlock stuff uh, for instance, like this, oral history uh, will give me more knowledge. So that's actually pretty good, and I probably should have done that by now. A domain gives me that option, but on other experience types, effectively. So either, and this is kind of a choice you've got to make, either you pick something that really works well with what you've got around in your land, so certain resources fit better into certain things. Like, for instance, all of this fish, if I was to pick... Uh, ancient seafarers, for instance, there's a load of stuff about docks and um, working fish and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, or, for instance, over here, uh, quarries. One of the types you can do is something called the God King Dynasty. And this gives you the ability to make quarries cheaper and then stone cutters cheaper and all the stuff that works off quarries. So that's all quite exciting. Or you can pick something that uses your experience type. So this all uses scout experience or exploration experience, which I don't really have a lot of. Whereas there are other things like warfare. I haven't actually seen any of these yet. So raiders, this is one choice. This is uh, interesting. Are there wonders? Um, there are kind of wonders, yes, but not in the way that we've seen them on Civ. It's slightly different. The units do less damage if they get damaged themselves. Blue bar. No, the blue bar is slightly different. Blue bar is morale. Units have health and morale. And certain units do more damage to morale than they do to health. So cavalry units, for instance, do a lot of morale damage over health damage. And if a unit loses all its morale, it's out of the fight and can't attack. But it can still get damaged. So it's easier to do, but it's really quite bad. So raider band. 
These are kind of like better warbands. So I can use this to spawn more army and we can go and do some attacking. Um, this one gives us uh, more raider bands. Which is quite... I mean, everything just spawns raider bands. This is, this is just total thing. And um, this gives me more uh, warfare experience from combat per unit. That's quite good. So the more fighting we do, the more we unlock. And then raider bands don't cost any gold. So this is kind of like Rome becomes raiders. Or we go down warriors, which is quite cool. So this lets me spawn Spartans. Spartans are kind of... That when they're Greek, they're not Roman, so already we've got a bit of a problem, <laughs> but they're very powerful, and they get more and more powerful. So I guess the, these are kind of quite defensive. Warriors is more of a defensive thing, and fortifications and, and making unkillable units, whereas Raiders is more making lots of offensive units. So, yeah. And there is, yes, there's a Millenniapedia. So if you right-click on anything, there is this big like research tab that you can have a look at stuff and you can you can just see whatever you want to see so it's all good it's all fine um i am considering teriyaki for dinner yeah i mean look at this city five population it's bigger than byzantium that's all i'm saying can we allow that um there's also this unclaimed city there and there's another one i've just found here i'm thinking conquering conquering right now we've got so much warfare experience i'm tempted to believe that's what we want to do we've already got two named armies i think we're going to go warfare other shouts um other good ones so seafarers are really good for the sea wild hunters are fun this is all about um animals so bone goods ivory goods uh things like the game so there's a lot of game about um sheep stuff like that and you get a unique archer which is very, very powerful. Um, seafarers are just obviously they're good at that. Naturalists, what do naturalists do? Oh yeah, naturalists is working on improved tiles. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> I don't think it's very good. Um, God King is all about working stone, uh, which is quite fun. So you get things like construction cost reductions for quarries and for uh, things like that. You can unlock pyramids. It's very Egyptian. Mound Builders lets you unlock a burial mound. These are heavy culture builds. So they don't do anything for your empire apart from make culture. But burial mounds also give you sanitation, which is really, really good. This is not a resource we've seen yet. But if we get really, really big, um, then that's fine. Ooh, construction cost decrease for farms. Ha! Huh. That's actually really good. That's really, really good. <laughs> huh. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, this, I didn't realize that was so good. It's not something we can do this game because we've got no engineering experience, but it is quite good. Um, and then Olympians is this sort of weird diplomatic one where you can basically host Olympic games and get huge, huge bonuses from them. And then you get lots of envoys and it's lots of diplomatic stuff. It's quite, quite fun. It's really good. We're going to go Raiders. I've got to go Raiders. I, I'm sorry. It's um, That's what we're going to do. <laughs> we have so much experience. I can I can make a good good start on it. So the two that I'm going to do, actually, 100% uh, raise value multiplier. That's interesting. That's good. Raider bands faster. That's quite good. Uh, warfare experience from combat per unit. I think I'm going to do this one because... This is quite handy. I'd rather generate more experience, uh, which is quite fun. Yeah, let's let's generate more experience from combat, because then I can upgrade even more. And now I've unlocked something called volunteers. Oh, no, that's not it. Um, where is it? Create raiders. Here we go. Create two raider bands at my homeland. Have I not? Oh, yes, no, I did. Yeah, there are two raider units here. Okay, we've got some raiders. Oh, my lord, they move four tiles. Ho, 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 Oh, yes. That's exciting. Um, Only one domain per era. No, worse than that. One domain every two eras. So you can change your government every odd era, and you can change your domain every even era. So it kind of alternates from there. 
That's really good. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, right, fine. Um, and then, do we want to add another, another movement? Because this is the thing. If I go towards the later stage ones, these are really, really cool. Um, I can gain health from victory. I can um, put a legacy government in, which, which is something that happens much later. Attack versus militia units. Militia units are what sit inside cities. So if we can just blaze through cities, that would be really, really quite good. But I think, I mean, create raiders is quite entertaining. I do like that, but I think I like moving quick. Oh no, outlaws for zero wealth output. Yeah, so I can have as many as I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, that's, that's obvious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can have as many units as we want now. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Um, upkeep, zero. Upkeep is now zero. Lovely. How many turns per era on average? Uh, about 30, I'd say. The, the, the Stone Age is quite quick. It's quite quick. So don't, um, don't take that one with too much sincerity. Now, I think I'm tempted to go and rush Japan quite quickly here. They do have some army. But these are very powerful units. The, the, the alternative is I go and rush this city-state, but it's quite far away from everything else. I think I'm going to go and attack Japan. So let's move you down there. I'm going to move these units down, and then I'm going to split into two stacks of two, and then keep moving them down south. Am I planning on using government points to upgrade the tribal? It is very tempting. It is very tempting. The other thing I can do is save my points and bring Crab Clantium into my government, which I'm very tempted to do. But I think what I'm going to do is get oral history because I want that knowledge. That is now, uh, we've gone from, from uh, two science per turn to three. That's a really big one. Okay, next up, I'm going to talk about the age of bronze and the text here, but I'm just going to go for like two minutes. I'm just going to very quickly top up my drink. So give me two minutes. I'll be back. Okay, just tell people not gone long. See you in a sec. I'm back. Don't worry. I'm back. <laughs> I was just talking to Sleepy. I've turned the game sound up a little bit. If it's too quiet, do say. I'm happy to turn it up a little bit. But this is the age of bronze. It's not your stream now. <laughs> no, this is, a, this is a stream for everyone. Right. Yes, I can see you're all noticing the right-hand side. We'll talk about that in a second. So, millennia. <laughs> Mouse Destruction, right. No, Millennium, song by Robbie Williams. It is not that. And I got that in my head first time I heard about this game because I do know that song. And I just watched the Robbie Williams documentary on Netflix. <laughs> Very different. This is Millennia. 
<laughs> Age of Blood now. Bows BS. Right. I know what you've been doing with the Age of Blood. I've seen your messages. They look violent. <laughs> and yes, that's absolutely what I'm going to do. So, Age of Bronze. We've got six new techs. Um, ship building is pretty much what you think it is. It lets me embark my units. It gives me a utility ship, which is very, very handy. It means that we can work the sea tiles very effectively. It gives me galleys. It also lets me spread onto water tiles quicker. Mining is all about outposts. Uh, um, no, sorry. A pioneer's outposts or are these finding gold? No, these are the outpost ones. So this unlocks quarries. It unlocks stone cutters. Basically any stone resource. That's how you get that. Officials are all about envoys and diplomacy and claiming land, which is quite good. But not really what I'm kind of going for right now. Discipline. This is the combat one. This unlocks spears, which are the upgrade to warbands, so we can upgrade our troops. It unlocks a chariot, which is the first cavalry unit. Uh, these do twice damage against ranged units. They're nice and fast. It's a big upgrade, which is cool. Um, forced march and reinforcements are things you can do with combat XP that heal your units and let you move twice in a single turn. They're very powerful. And Discipline also gives you a fourth army slot, which is quite exciting, do you not think? Community is kind of a lot of improvement buildings for your cities. So cranes let you put more improvements down. These are really, really good. Kilns let you turn things into bricks. Uh, we've got mills, which we absolutely want to have a look at in a second because this turns wheat into flour. And that's where we can start chaining stuff together, which is really handy. And saw pits, yes, yeah, 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 saw pits are really, really handy. And then belief. Belief is all about science and culture. So temples are really, really good. One culture and one knowledge. Right now I'm gaining two and two. So that's a huge increase. It's a, it's a massive increase. And it's one I always forget to get. Um, so that is something we do want to do at some point. And then it's also a couple of other improvements to things like wines and whatever. Get in the kiln, yeah. As Bothia says... The fourth slot on the army is a huge thing. It's really, really good. So I'm going to unlock that first because I actually have four units. And if I could put them in the same army as I am going down towards Japan, that would be very handy. I'm actually going to move my other armies down here. They're much slower, um, but it would be really, really handy if I had some reinforcements down in this direction. Now, I'm using this other army, the Ninth Legion, to go and defeat some barbs. Because, I mean, what else are we going to do? That's a, I mean, it's just a quick, easy kill. We like that a lot. We like to see that. And Byzantium we can now build something new. Now, there's no point in building other units because the units I've got are way, way better. I want to just make sure that Byzantium keeps growing. At the moment, it's all about food and it has no production. So I'm building things really, really slowly, which is not good. But... Work camps. Now, this building would give me two production and one engineering XP. So this is, again, another building that generates you ticking XP. Warfare XP is my most important one, though. So I'm thinking maybe an encampment would be quite good because this gives me one warfare XP just as a ticking thing. That could be cool as well. The meeting hall gives me diplomatic XP. Lookout gives me exploration XP. Food stockpile I do not need. I think I'm going to go for the encampment and just stack together all the advantages I need. But we'll see if that works out to be the better option. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll see. What's in this tribal village? Ooh, lost spear. So this is quite an extra... Actually, this is really, really interesting. We have a choice to make. Either I can pick up a spear unit, a three unit. I don't think that's super important. I can gain 20 warfare experience, which is huge because that will let me upgrade my raiders even more. I like that. Or we can gain 30 experience, which is 50% more, but we gain five chaos. Ah, chaos. It's one of two different things we have now. We've got innovation and we've got chaos. Things that you do in the game either provide innovation or chaos. As you build it up, it starts to accumulate. If it gets to full, Something either really good 
or really bad happens. And after that, it starts to settle down. So I can take a short term benefit at the cost of a long term negative down the line. And I'm absolutely going to go for chaos. Yep, you're absolutely right, Doc. That's what I'm going to do. 30 experience sounds wonderful. So now I have five chaos. That's five per turn. That's not, that's not just like off. That's now five per turn. So in 20 turns, I'm going to hit the threshold of that. And we will be chaos. We will become chaos. <laughs> chaos accumulates each turn. Once a chaos event happens, it's a very bad thing. However, once it happens, it then takes the amount you're getting per turn and takes 70% off it. So I will then have 1.5 per turn. So it settles down after a while. J just trust me, it's worth it. it it's, it's good fun. Uh, what can we do? 100% raise value multiplier? Two Raider Band units? Or do I go for the extra movement? I like the extra movement, you know? I think that might be the one to take. Night March. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And I've got two more units that I can now peel off and make into these two. So I've now got three. <laughs> I've got two stacks of three. This is mad. This is the Bronze Age collapse. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess this is what we're talking about with the age. Whoever completes the age first gets to pick the next age. The regular one is the age of iron. That's like the neutral option. That will happen if nothing else happens. The good option is the age of heroes. If I have discovered three landmarks by the time of me setting the age of heroes, I can pick this as the choice. Now, the Age of Heroes is really cool. I've played it once. Basically, you have hero units on the map and they go out and you have to perform mythical actions. So you get like Hercules going to do trials. It's really, really cool. I love it. And you get all kinds of things where scouts get buffs and yeah, it's really, really cool. Or you get the Age of Blood, which is a negative. It's a bad, it's a crisis age. <laughs> and this absolutely happens if we kill six or more non-barbarian units in this age, we trigger it, whether we like it or not. I think, I think we know what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, the Age of Iron is basically just the default. It's like the Age of Bronze. It progresses the game and nothing really good or bad happens kind of that's a way to think about it anyway it's a little more complicated than that but it's kind of like that yeah the middle option call it that even though it's bad age of blood sounds infinitely more interesting and fun you better believe it does <laughs> it very very much does now uh the ninth legion is gonna go and start besieging some barbarians up to the north. You can see we found another uh, little city-state, which is very nice to know. Not that we need to know where that is for our army once we're done with Japan. <laughs> I would never do that. No, 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 no. Can we still get the other text? No, we've picked a domain for this era. So that's it. We're raiders. And I guess this is kind of where Millennia maybe differs from Civ. In Civ, the nation you pick kind of is, is like a... Um, it's a play style that then sticks with you all game. You can play Rome and you can have any benefit to them. And every game is different. So I am like a tribal raider Civ at the moment. And I could play Germany and do exactly the same thing. Or I could have another game with Rome and play them as seafarers. So it's kind of all over the place. You, you do different things in order to make stuff work. It's good fun. It's, uh, yeah, you've got options. You've got options. But as you can see, we are now heading down south and there is a scout cavalry. There is an archer and in the town, there is an archer, a warband and a leader. Now, archers are quite bad news. They're bad news because these do count as line units. So we know that archers are strong against line units. I'll tell you what I need to do. I need to open hostilities against Japan, which might take some time. Um, declare hostilities. We'll do that. Now, I can't actually declare war on them yet, I don't believe. 
Oh, that's Brazil. Oh, have we met? Well, I think we've met somebody else. We've met Brazil. Very good. So next time we'll get the reply to that. So basically what we're going to do, I forgot to do this earlier, is we can now fight them in neutral territory. We'll declare war on them in a few turns. So we're going to go over to um, Nongoma and take over there whilst we wait. It's times for attack, but not defense. Yeah, absolutely. So they can still get killed really easily, but they can do a lot of damage as parting shots to me at the same time. Nomads. Oh, the choice, the choice, the choice. What are we going to do? Do we want government XP or warfare XP? Warfare XP is really good, but government XP is so difficult to get hold of. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pick that one now. Now we've got 36. Which means I can go for tribalism reformed and give myself 10 innovation. This is the positive thing. Just like chaos is negative, innovation is positive. If I get to 100 innovation, something really good happens. Uh, and two culture per turn. I'm only getting two culture per turn at the moment. So that doubles it. <laughs> yep. I absolutely want that. That is very, very handy. Oh, Crab Clantium is almost integrated now. Almost. Not quite. But almost. Uh, and apparently if I hold control and go into combat, I don't move Tal. I'm just testing this. So this is just uh, killing a Barbarian before it can do too much damage to me. You can see they can't hit my archers because my uh, warbands, they, they stand in the way. Love you, Asa. Your voice is so soothing. Oh, Thomas. <laughs> very sweet thank you um yeah and i did move there we go so holding control did that nice i didn't know that that'd be a cool thing to do in civ uh brazil yes lovely 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 now japan um diplomatic action available in three turns i think i can declare war on them then i believe i can't go into their land right now um i might as well just have a quick explore around just go and have a have a quick peek see what's going on see what's moving about i'll look i'll be annoying i'll i'll check to see if they've got any vassals they might have actually made some vassals themselves you don't know oh this is something we've got to be a little careful of as well they've got scouts so their scouts might kill my scouts oh another oh another vassal yeah these are really good i want as many of these as i can get we're gonna go wide absolutely going to go wide um, as I move my other army down to the south. And the Barbarians, they have Defender rank 2, which is slightly tougher than the regular one. But they've only got the same walls as before. And I believe I can just shoot over them. Yeah, so do you see, their attack and defense is actually slightly higher. It's 10 and 14 compared to my 7 and 10. So they will do quite a lot of damage to my warbands. I might lose a warband here. But let me tell you, warbands... Yeah, they're, they're not very powerful. We can replace them pretty easily. They're, they're pretty expendable, so we don't mind this. I'd rather clear the barbs. Um, yeah, we go. We lost one. It's always going to happen at some point. That was fine. I'm planning on going to a vacation over spring break. Shall I go to the Netherlands or UK? Oh, both are beautiful. I would always recommend the UK, but I hear the Netherlands is lovely. Oh, Alex Frost. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's a very sweet... Damn, there's an Ursa stream. Why am I only just finding out about this? What have I missed? You have missed uh, two hours and a quarter of millennia. If you want to know about these streams, by the way, if only there was a way of finding out knowledge beforehand. If only you could be an early bear. Oh, -ho. I wait you can. Yes, this is the thing. So if you go to Discord and sign up as an early bear, you'll get notified whenever I'm going to go live. So... Good to know, isn't it? But thank you so much, Alex. That is very, very sweet. Very sweet indeed. Um, oh, 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 Did you see this? I've just seen this. That is a barbarian warlord. 22 attack, 22 defense. That's not good. That is not good. That is right outside Byzantium. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, we need to be a little careful here. Um, we're up to population five, which is good, but we're going to need, I think, to get some defense. Luckily, defense is pretty easy. We're going to get raider band. We're going to take this one quickly. This gives me the option to spawn raider bands later. I think that's just an option I can pick warfare for. Yeah, like 20 
in order to get a raider ban. There you go. So that's really, really handy. Um, but now we have a standing army. And this thing should be able to hold off this barb warlord. Hopefully. The raiders are getting raided. I know the irony. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> it's too much for me. <laughs> uh, maybe you should call the raiders the Varangian guard. Yes. Absolutely we should. That is so, so good. Um, we're going to call this the first Varangian um, lead, uh, legio. And then we'll call the other one the second. Um, because that is a great idea. Varangian legio. Oh, amazing. Good idea. Good idea. Getting through it slowly now. Starting to pick up a little bit of speed. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. The Barbarian chose to attack the town. And this is interesting. You can see what the defenses look like. I actually have two units of militia. Now, these start out pretty rubbish. This is militia number two. Attack of nine. Defense of 13, and you'll see they're doing very little damage. Very little damage against the Barbarian Warlord. But luckily for me, my Raider Bands are much tougher. And 4 to 1, 4 to 1 is absolutely... Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, Ar Archie Factual. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Um, can we please change the name uh, of the city to Ryzantium? Well, I, somebody did ask very politely for me to name Byzantium, but tell you what, I'll uh, I'll make Ryzantium the next, just to really confuse people. <laughs> How about that? How about that? And um, Alex Frost, I am going to make a new town very soon. If you want to contribute a name for a town for Crab Clantium, feel three. Feel three. Oh, here we go. So integration, this is a thing now. So I can now spend 25 government experience to integrate. This will turn Crab Clantium into a full-blooded city. Um, it will mean that I can put improvements down, I can work the tiles, I can build things in it. It's wonderful. However, it has a culture upkeep. So it actually will take three culture per turn away from me. So there are, there are problems with having lots of cities. Oh, dearie me. Crab in my throat. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, I tell you what. Actually, these units. Hmm. I think they heal. They heal when I kill things with them. That's really nice. Okay, I'm going to give them a turn. And I, I reckon there's a barb camp over here. Why did you appear from that direction? I don't know. I don't know, but I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all. Diplomacy. Two turns. Okay, we're just keeping an eye on this. Keeping an eye on this. Let's go and have a look around the back. Any other cities? I want to know. I want to know everything we can get. Where are your units? What are you doing? Oh, another tribal camp. Lovely. Oh, Nicola, hello. You're back. Um, what have you missed? Uh, we're 20 turns in. We are killing barbarians, or trying to. Um, let's see if this one works. We've lost... One of our warbands, but our archers are still very tough. As long as we have the archer, I feel very good about our chances because we've got the tactical advantage, should we call it that? Especially if they fire over the top. Well, they're saying that oh, our troop is going to get very weak. So we might have to just heal for a turn or two here. But uh, there's something else we can do as well, actually. Spend some experience once we've got discipline, which is really, really cool. So, let's have a look at culture. We've got a few options. We can go for a Eureka and gain 10 knowledge, which would be really cool. We can create a town. Now, we can't create another town in Byzant uh, Byzantium, sorry, at the moment, because we don't have a slot for it. And actually, thinking about it, oh, I don't think we actually have the... Although we can create a slot in my vassal. No, I thought we couldn't, but we can. That's good. Uh, we could boost our yields. We could get ourselves a Raisin Army, get an Archer and a Warband, but I think I've got enough troops right now. Troops I'm doing a K on. 
I think I want a town because we want to set up for Crab Clantium being really, really good when we take it over. So I'm going to put a town in there. Pompeii. Oh, Pompeii. There you go. It feels like the 90s version of a hybrid between Civ 5 and humankind. Yeah, that's probably not. That's not unfair. <laughs> that's not unfair at all. Oh, dear. It is really fun. The actual mechanics of the game are really, really good. That's that's what I like about this game. But the graphics aside, the, the actual core gameplay is really, really strong. And that's what I'm enjoying about playing it so far. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm positive about the game. It's been a lot of fun. Um, let's just move in this direction. I don't think... Japan have got another vassal in this direction. I don't think they've actually settled out just yet, which is quite good to know. So we'll uh, we'll keep my war bands around. We're almost in a position where we can attack. Almost, not quite. What's in the tribal camp? Whoa, a village elder is holding a council with their guests. So I can either <laughs> share in the ceremony and claim some diplomacy XP. We haven't got any of this yet. Um, or we could claim some more Warfare XP. Warfare XP. I'm breaking up the ceremony. And I'm sending it back to my raiders. More oh, raiders. I want to save out the pillage as quickly as I can. Plus 1.5% uh, attack against militia units is really strong. So that would be very good if we could do that as soon as possible. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna... If, the longer I leave this, the barb camp actually starts healing over time. Which isn't great. But I don't want to lose this other warband. So I will heal for a turn and then we'll go back, hopefully. Uh, gameplay over graphics every single time. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. I mean, there comes a, a, a sort of a, a point, doesn't it? Oh, Sahara Desert already been found. Yeah, we've been unlucky on landmarks. I haven't really found too many this game. But um, yeah, uh, any old Flash game Civilization Bronze Age? No, I never played that. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, no barb camp. Okay, no, so the barbarian just spawned from nowhere. They do that sometimes. Barbs will just spawn from nowhere. They don't have to come from camps in this game. Isn't that scary? <laughs> uh, right, we're going for it. I waited a turn. I've got a little bit more health now. Let's see if we can knock the walls down. Uh, and then we can get some good damage here. Uh, I'll probably lose this warband. But that's okay. That's not a problem. Yep, lost that. But it's now an archer versus a warband. And I should win this next turn. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, and I just realized there's another barb there. <laughs> what did I tell you? Surprise barbs. Yep, there's a seasoned barbarian. This is way more powerful. This is like a like a spear level. So I have mucked that up. Sorry. The, the, the ninth legion, Hispania, was named after a, a lost legion. How true that turned out to be. <laughs> Prepare to lose that legion. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's not good. It's not good. Never mind. Let's have a look at diplomacy. Declare war. So, here we go. And this is quite interesting, actually. The more diplomatic negativity that you have against um, a player like Japan, the more diplomatic opinion you have against barbarians. So, do you see that? Minus 50 versus Japan a minus 25% against barbarians. So what happens, and I love this, <laughs> is the barbarians get more and more angry with you and they start attacking you more and more and more. So um, yes, uh, you can't control what the archers shoot at, no. No, there is an element of randomness and you need to use things like leaders to do this properly. Um, and we're actually gonna start causing unrest in Byzantium. Oh, unrest is a bad mechanic, there we go. So. Yeah, unrest is kind of like loyalty. Loyalty does exist in this game. It does exist in this game. The way to stop it is to have units stationed in the city. They kind of act as a town guard. And actually, there is a town guard that we can build. City guard. This suppresses unrest by eight compared to a warband, which suppresses it by four. So you, there are kind of like guard troops you can keep in the city. Um... Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Oh, Alex, yeah, I can see you there. Can I have a unit name? Because the next city should be called Ryzantium. No, nope, totally agree. Totally agree. You can have a unit name if you'd like. Of course you can. Let me know. Let me know what you want to, to name a unit. Surprise Barbs is terrifying. Yes. If you conquer Japan, 
Are those landmarks yours? No, unfortunately not. No, 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 no. Um, does the difficulty go from prince to masochist? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty difficult at the top level. It very much is. Um, Varangian Guard embracing roleplay. Absolutely it is. Yep, 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 yep. It, uh, it is exactly what happened to Rome. Yep. And this is just early access. Yes, this is early access at the moment. It, uh, it very much is. So, first legion. The first legion is going to run in. The second legion has spotted the fact that there is a single warband outside the walls of Japan. So we're going to go and attack it as quickly as we can. Although, oh, or there's an archer. No, there's an archer. I'm actually going to go and run around and attack the archer because that thing can do really bad damage against my guard. Um, as you can see, oh, big heads. So I want to take that out of the game really quickly. And you see there, the blue bar finished first. So I actually killed its morale before we killed the unit. So as soon as the morale drops, they can no longer act in combat and they're sitting ducks. They're absolutely sitting ducks. So it's something you want to do. It's just uh, a little difficult. So they're probably going to move that unit in. Annoyingly, I thought you continued that fight. I thought you continued that fight and then we'd be able to kill them. But no, no, apparently they're, they're off the hook. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Um, let's bring this unit through. We get some reinforcements on the way. Surprise reinforcements. There's surprise barbarians and there are surprise Romans, and we are the latter. We are very much surprise Romans. <laughs> Absolutely, we are. Looking forward to the three weekend. Go and have fun with it. You get the first 60 turns for three. We're only on turn six, uh, 26. It's, it's a big demo. It's very, very good. Oh, you legends, the archer actually managed to survive there. Right, run back to Crab Clantium. Run away. No, there's a barbarian. <laughs> Can we have an F in chat for the Ninth Legion? Can we have an F in chat? They're gone. They're dead. Oh, look, they're already crouched and kneeling and injured. Oh, dear. Yep, routing makes sense of broken morale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cavalry does morale damage. Varangian guard do morale damage. It's all a bit, uh, it, it's cool. It's cool. It's different types of combat that we don't really see, which is lovely. Uh, new turn, which is awesome. I want you to go and do this. Oh, the F's in chat. I can see them now. Thank you so much. That is wonderful. Oh, dear. Oh, there's a salute as well. Give me back my legion. <laughs> no, never. It's dead. It has been consumed in the fires of Rome. Oh dear. So what um what buff do we have? Oh raider bands are good against cavalry. That's a lot, that's unfortunate because there is no cavalry here, but we can catch this warband again out of the city and kill it off before it can hide behind the walls. That's ideally what we want to do, and it's gonna do barely any damage against me here, so that's lovely. It's a fabulous animation, isn't it? What I like to say is it's to the point. It's efficient. <laughs> it's efficient. Oh yeah, morale damage again. Um, it took morale damage again, but this time it, uh, it seems to have been killed. So it was routed. Oh no, it's been pushed back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think if it's been routed, I think it doesn't move the next turn. That's what I think has happened there. We'll see. Remember the ninth? Yeah. How did you get a town put down so far from a city? I, I spawned a settler, um, and I made this vassal. And actually, it's quite interesting now because... It's integrated, and I can now spend 25 government XP to go BAM! Crab Clantium is now part of my nation. Ha huzzah! Huzzah! It's in, and it's here. Wonderful. So, this is where it gets uh, interesting. I'm now losing three culture per turn, but I've gained two per turn, because this city is actually gaining a little bit, and that's gaining it from my government. Luckily, and this is the thing. Uh, homeland plus two culture. That's interesting. Um, buff to Oh, no, no. Sorry, right. So my, my... Okay, this is where it gets complicated. My homeland, which is Byzantium, this is getting itself uh, to culture. But then I've got the upgrade from my tribal government, which gives two culture to every capital. This now counts as a capital. Do you see there's a star? All of your regions count as capitals. It's much more complicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, 
uh, settling in cities looks so much more complicated than in Civ 6. It really is. It really is. But I like it. It's good. It is fun. It just takes a little bit of time to get your head around. But once you get there, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> just about. Do I actually get any more science? Uh, no. No, we don't. Okay, that's fine. And this is quite interesting as well. We've now gone above five population. And you can see Byzantium is now growing a lot slower because I now have two needs. So I need two food for every population. But now, from the sixth population onwards, and then plus one for every population beyond the sixth, I now need housing. So I have one out of one because my government gives me housing. But I now need to put more housing into this city because now I'm not 200% on housing. I'm doing really well on food, but I'm only 100% on housing. So it averages it out. And because I have no housing in the city, I've now slowed my growth. So as a city gets bigger, you need more and more and more things in it in order to make it worth it. Now, luckily for me, there is something I can put down. Uh, there is a tile improvement that I have unlocked called the dwelling and that gives me three housing so i can use some of my uh, built up points i really haven't got many of these but um we'll get more of those as we go uh i can use some of that to build a dwelling and i'm going to build it on this scrubland because there's not really much i can do on this um I, I could put it next to chonky town but i've got plans for that so we're going to put this down uh i will give myself three housing and bam do you see that i've gone from growing in eight turns to growing in four because suddenly my needs are now really met Hello from Iceland. Hello. Lovely to have you here. Hope you're enjoying. Uh, Crab Calantium is working. It's, uh, it's not working anything at the moment, um, but it has a little bit of food from my government. It'll grow to two population really quickly, and I need to think about what I want to build in this city first. I think I want more government XP. This is really, really good. So we're going to build some government XP. More settlers, more integration more fun and as somebody has very very kindly said yes i can now upgrade my raiders with some experience i can get two more raider bounds and i can have 1.5 percent uh, extra attack uh, sorry 150 percent attack against militias which is really cool so now i can fight against japan with all the more ferocity next turn which is lovely and i have more units you can see Byzantium now, it has 10 unrest. It is generating unrest by the number of regions, the population. And the longer I'm at war, the more unrest my city will generate. That war unrest will get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. But if I have a garrison in it, like these two units, uh, I am now suppressing it minus eight. It's not the best unit to be suppressing it with, but right now... It's better than nothing. So I, I think I'll leave in there just for this turn. Really like the mixed units. Yeah, Civ 7 would, would benefit from mixed units. I do like the, the extra strategy in combat. It is quite fun. It honestly is really quite good. Um, I've been impressed. The, the actual mechanics of this game are very, very good. Yay for coffee. Thank you, Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy's wonderful. We know that. Oh, yep. Oh, there's the F in chat. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet princes. I tell you what, these archers got... Oh, they got two shots off before they died. And they promoted. They got enough experience to promote. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're gone. They're dead. That's it. Ah, oh, dear. Okay, I'm going to move this warband down. Uh, and I'm going to move this one across. This this will wait in Byzantium just to stop barbs from killing me. Oh, hello. A scout cavalry on the way. Uh, don't mind if I do, because don't forget, my guard hit cavalry particularly hard. Bam. Killed without any damage. <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. Okay. So, what has... The government got in its city. Oh, Japan's actually done this pretty well. They've done this pretty well. So they have uh, basic walls. So they're not too difficult to defeat. They've got some militia. Militia are pretty weak. 
but they've also got a Spartan. So actually, Japan went for the other combat government, um, and they've gone for a leader. Oh, this is this is uh, this isn't good. I've sieged the city, but they are actually fairly well defended here, and they've got a lot of defenses as well in this town. One air unit capacity, city militia two. I could try and take the town out first, you know, and then go for the city. I might do that, you know. I might do that. Hmm. Or we could just give it a go. Lose 40%. No, it reckons I'm, I'm, I don't have enough damage here. I might wait until I've got... I might lure them out. I'm going to try and get them out of the city. So we're going to attack this town instead and see how this goes. So they've got archers in the back line, which isn't very good. And they've got militia, but their militia isn't very strong. I'm hoping I can fight through it. No, you know what? I don't think we're anywhere near powerful enough for this. Interesting. We might have to bring archers and different unit formations. This is good to see. So there you go. If you wanted to know, can you just rush through with endless Therangian guard uh, with no unit formation? No. Actually, the defense adjustment. They've got a huge defense adjustment because I'm attacking. They've got it on a hill. I'm attacking over a river. Okay. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. Interesting. So we've had two units routed at the moment. We might get three units routed. Oh, no. One has survived. Two are routed. But that's okay. We can probably pull these units out. And I, instead of attacking, I'm going to just continue siege. Because what I can do is I've actually got the city under siege. And we have 0 0.6 regional efficiency. So we are starving Japan out right now. We are starving them. And look, I've got reinforcements. I've got archers on the way. We can upgrade a unit to a leader. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried. We've got options. I was just trying my luck. I was trying to be cheeky there. <laughs> Getting wrecked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Professional, professional millennia player here. <laughs> it's a new game. We're allowed to be like this. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just having a look at this. Do I get one improvement point for both cities? No, it's just Homeland, isn't it? Yeah, it's not worth it, I don't think. My next settler costs 36 because it's more expensive. Every time you do something, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. But I would like a settler pretty soon if I can get one. The next thing I need to do is I need to start really thinking about how we're going to get some production into Byzantium. Because, yeah, production's a bit of a problem for me at the moment bit of a problem for me at the moment. So what I could do is put a forester down and start turning woods into logs. But the problem with that is you only get one log and a log is worth two production. And at the moment, that forest tile is giving me one food, one production. So I'm just moving it from one food, one production into two production. It's not great. But later, Later down the line. Oh, here we go. This discipline. This will help massively. This will help massively. So we've now got the upgrade to our warband. We've got reinforcements. So I can restore army health, which is wonderful. I can force march. I've got a fourth slot. There's a lot of fun stuff that we can do now. Um, we'll come back to that in a sec. Um, but one thing that we could upgrade is this saw pit. So a saw pit improvement turns up to three logs into up to three lumber. So a log is worth two production and it becomes worth lumber, which is four production. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It would mean that if I had three lumber mills and a saw pit, I'd get one engineering XP per turn and 12 production. So to put that in context, 12 production would be 400% of what I've got right now. So I do need to think about doing that. So, thinking about it, yeah, I think community is the next one I want to get. I want to unlock saw pets, and the other thing I want to unlock is a mill. Because then I can start turning my wheat into flour, which would mean that my city would never stop growing. Yeah, community sounds brilliant. You just got here, and you're lost. Don't worry! It's a new game, we're all allowed to be lost. It's all good. Is doubling your improvement points per turn for the tribal government worth it? It is. 
But it's also not because there's something else you can do. So I'm currently building an encampment. I don't have much production, but I can set a city onto this. Levy workers. And this turns my production into improvements. So the more production the city's got, the more improvements I can get. And it's a way of rushing tile improvements, which is really, really, really good. So, yeah, it's not worth it. Actually, one thing I'm going to do before I do that is I'm just going to go back and unlock the Age of Stone. Do you see it's now 50% discount? Um, and this gives me a building that gives me more research, more, more knowledge. So, yeah, we'll do that quickly. Um, okay, this is this was our reinforcements, wasn't it? So, actually, yeah, we're going to go and just uh, kill that unit quickly. Um, sorry, Japan, I'm claiming the experience from you, which is lovely. And we're going to bring the reinforcements down south. And here, now we've unlocked a couple of things that we can do. So, warfare. Reinforcements. Restores. Using 10 warfare experience, we can restore army health and morale at the cost of combat experience. So what I'm going to do with this unit is move it outside of the land and then I'm going to go to warfare and then use reinforcements on this unit and BAM! It's now healed. <laughs> so I'm using some of my experience and I've lost some combat experience but it's now a lot better than it was and now I can run and go and kill this random uh, warband which is in the land which is killing Japan's units Generate some stuff, and now we're generating Blood Age. Remember what I said before? If we kill too many units, we trigger the Age of Blood. Yep, that's exactly what we are going to do. Oh, and here's a fun thing. So the Ursium Legion has arrived. There are two warbands and an archer. But look what I can do. I can actually select a warband, and with three warfare experience, even outside of my own land, I can upgrade it. So you don't need to bring your warriors home to upgrade. You can actually upgrade them whilst they are about. So there we go. I've got two upgraded units there. Ha ha. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> and even better, actually, I can upgrade one of the spearmen into a leader two, which would be a really powerful unit. Um... What do I need to do that? 20 Warfare XP. Okay, we need to generate a little bit of Warfare XP, but that would help my other combat units. So, yeah, I like that. And I'm going to go onto this tile. If I were to pillage their wheat, I would get 10 wealth. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> That'll annoy them. Japan cannot bear my army. Yeah, I at the moment, I'm losing this war, right? They They have more strength than I have. But they also can't get out. So I, I very much am... I can play this siege game as long as I want. My nation is doing uh, fine. He says looking at a barbarian warlord coming out to <laughs> crap <Clantium. laughs> Oh dear. Uh, let's get a spear going here. That's not good. <laughs> so my scout... Oh, we found... I think this is Brazil, isn't it? Brazil are what I would call safely away from me. <laughs> very much safely away from me so that's fine listening to these sentences but not paying proper attention is mad log yeah you got to pay attention to everything i say <laughs> it's good it's a really good game just if you if you just sort of keep following it for a while you'll you'll start to get random things oh the barb attacked my city again that's good because then my militia fights back and it got killed like if they attack me I have four militia troops that then go and save. So yeah, you've always got a bit of defense in your city. It's always worth it, which is great. Yeah, I'm 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 liking these raiders so far. I have to say, uh, relatively amusing. Do I leave one raiding band up north? I am tempted to, you know. Oh, but you see, Ryza, uh, Byzantium now is generating unrest. If I leave it alone, it's going to be very unhappy. So I'm actually going to have to bring my troops back. Um, and keep them here just for a little bit of time. Just to stop Byzantium from revolting. If it does that, I lose all my yields and it's horrible. So it's not worth it. <laughs> not worth it at all. But is, is there beef in Kobe? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Ah, dear. So we've actually got a fourth slot now for my Legion. 
which is quite fun. So what I'm going to do, what's the best thing to do? I'm going to take my most injured unit and bring it out of the Legion. And then I'm going to take my Archer over and I'm going to take one of my upgraded Spears over. So now my first Varangian Legion is made up of a lot more cool and fun stuff. And then the other one is going to go and join in with this like that there we go so we've got two legions now first and second legion they're much more upgraded they're much stronger it's looking much better now i'm happy i'm happy the peasants are revolting yes yeah they do smell <laughs> oh he's funny he's funny so i've got loads more troops now we've got loads more troops in this area it's um it's looking good we're just going to keep exploring around here as a Japanese scout. Um, looks like there's a barb camp within the walls of a city-state. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Don't, don't, don't question what you see. It's just happening. So we've uh, just researched uh, tribal elders. We're going to go back and just research the other one, workers. This will actually give me a little bit of improvement points that I can use just to upgrade my land. I really do like the sound of because Byzantium is generating a whole bunch of food. Food is not the problem. <laughs> it's production. I need production now. So we want to get ourselves some of that if we can. Actually, Crab Clantium, we could start to upgrade here as well. So the pasture would give me wool and meat, which would help the city to grow. Don't mind that as an idea as well. I could start to think about putting quarries down. Yeah, we've got to the stage where we need to start thinking about getting some improvement points. I I don't mind that at all. Please don't ignore the rivers. Yes, we learned that lesson. <laughs> we learned that lesson, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, let's get some more wealth by raising here, which is good. Scout Cavalry, Leader, Spartan, Militia, hmm, they're very tough, they're unhelpfully tough. <laughs> I think I will try and defeat this town first. Let's get this over and done with. So, if we bring some units out, I might be able to actually lure them out of the city if I, if I put more things under siege here. But I'm not attacking over a river now, they do have... Uh, a archer, but we, if we can kill that, that would be awesome. My archer's doing okay. My warband, I'm tempted just to heal for a couple of turns, you know, and then we'll attack. I, I have time. I have time. I don't need to rush. I don't need to rush. Don't attack from across the river. Yep, 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 yep. We got it. We got it. Don't you worry. Oh. What have you brought out? Scout Cavalry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They just moved a unit out of their city. That's awesome. That's very good to know. Um, I'm actually going to just use this Varangian guard to go and kill it. Yeah, it's already routed. Bam. <laughs> that was uh, easy to do. And I think I'll give it one more turn. One more turn of healing. There's a scout. The scout's still just finding some stuff. Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji was near Japan. I like that. That's There's something nice about that one. Okay. Oh, yeah, they moved their army out. We knew this might happen at some point. That is brilliant. Okay, now we can fight them on the field of battle. This is an archer... A warband and a leader. Yes, this is really big. This is huge. So we're going to move this army over, move you across, and we should be able to win. Hopefully. We'll see. So my archer does some really good damage against their line. They do some good damage against our line. Can we break through? Yes, yeah, so we've routed them. Now we're onto their leader. This looks okay. This looks okay. Normally being out, outnumbering is normally what does you 
the most in a battle. Yeah, both are routed units now. Perfect. And uh, yeah, everything's routed. Which means I should be able to go with my other unit and just uh, finish it off. Hopefully, there we go. Blood Age Crisis is upon us. If we control the future, the Blood Age will happen. So if you attack a routed unit, it dies immediately. Good to know. Very good to know. Which means there is only militia in the town now. Which is really, really easy to kill. These militia are very, very weak. And we get 50% extra damage against militia, don't forget, with our raiders. So, that was a total misplay from Japan. They were safe-ish. I say safe-ish in their walls. Not particularly safe, but um, safer. Let's call it safer. And now we have uh, broken through. And, yeah, they don't even have a chance to be routed. We have destroyed the town. Oh, Okay, yeah, it's totally destroyed. <laughs> I thought it would just be raised and we'd be able to keep it, but no. No, that's totally destroyed. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the leader is just a bald guy with a club. That's every leader. <laughs> it's just what it is. It's what happens. Oh, dear. Actually, this uh, scout could just get killed quickly, I think, with my spearmen. Hopefully. And bam. Done. Easy kill. Easy kill. Oh, we've got a culture power. We have a culture power. Okay. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, is this game an alpha or a beta? I think this would count as an alpha. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really know the definition between the two, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, we'll call it an alpha. Yeah, it's more of a demo build. You'll get to play the demo up to turn 60, which is quite cool. I like that. Um, it'll be cool if you let me take the turn. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, leader upgrade, warfare points jumped up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we got some good combat there, didn't we? Um, so we have just completed the workers. We've got some things we can buy now. Uh, I'm going to go back into community. I think that works really well. And we are going to probably rush it because I don't have a town slot three. I could do local reforms. I don't think that's going to do anything. We've got no outposts. And I don't need a spear and an archer. So we're going to go for Eureka. This will give me 10 science uh, or 10 knowledge for now. Yeah, that's half the tech. Wonderful. That's really good. Alpha equals missing features. Beta is feature complete needing a polish. Okay, we'll call it a beta then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Closed beta. This is um, it's probably probably what you would call it. Oh, the encampment's finished now. Excellent. Excellent. This is giving me extra warfare experience as a ticking ability. Beautiful. Now we can get ourselves a council building, which will give us more knowledge per turn. That's a really good pickup for us. And actually, once we've got the town center, um, I'll get the council building in Crab Clantium as well. That means we'll go from a tasty three government points per turn to five points per turn. And we can do that. So we've picked up a few more improvement points. I'm trying to think of what the best thing to do is. I think we do need more production in Byzantium. That is the thing we need to do. So what I'm going to do is go to an improvement next to my town. Because if I improve this, I get more wealth. And I'm going to gather and I'm going to put down a forester. Now, if I go into my town, you can see we're now working a forest. And I now have one of these logs, which gives me two production, which is very, very good indeed. So the city is still growing, which is good. Actually, I mean, need it. I need some more food. Unbelievably, we need more food. But we've now got a bit more production, which means we're going to start building things quicker. And it means I can actually use my production to gain 2.4 improvement points per turn if I wanted to. That's really big. So there are options. We want to get ourselves to the stage where seven population, every single one is upgraded. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that right now. We're actually going to switch over from the council building to levy workers. So we're going to go from 1 point to 3.8. And then we can upgrade our land as quickly as as possible. What would this city give? It would give another 1.2. Yeah. All right. So we'll finish off the town center and I'll switch through. And then we're going to get ourselves quickly to a point where all of my um, all of my tiles are improved. 
And I seem to remember, yeah, I had another community uh, project point. One point isn't big. This is the thing. My Byzantium already is gaining 2.4. So I want to actually save my government points because I want to settle. Like, it's weird. It's weird, but government points are really, really, really expensive. So you don't really want to do things. Yeah, I totally get that it's for improvements, but I don't think it's worth it. We'll see. We'll see if it proves to be correct or not. But um, there you go. So, I've got a little bit of army maneuvering that we can do now, I believe. Um, oh! Oh, 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 oh! They've moved the Spartan and the Settler out. Yes! Oh, Japan, what are you doing? Okay, what I want to do now is we're going to use my spear, upgrade it to a leader with 20 XP. Oh my goodness, look, it looks like a cool leader and everything. It's got a cool costume. Um, and then we're going to go into warfare and use a re... Oh, we can't use reinforcements in enemy territory. Um, actually, which one is it? No, it is this unit. No, I'm not in enemy territory. So we can go to reinforcements. I lose a little bit of unit experience, um, but I heal them, which is awesome. And now they've still got movement, so I can go in uh, and we can start attacking this unit, which, uh, which needs to happen. This is quite a powerful thing. Spartans are very powerful and they are very defensive. Very, very defensive. But we've got archers. We've got enough units. We need to kill it. And whilst it's out of the, uh, out of the defenses, this is the time to strike. We cannot let it go back inside Japan's walls. If it does... This isn't good. And even if I lose a Berserker here or there, or a Raider Band, doesn't matter. I need the kill. The kill is so much more important. Will there be a DLC on this game? Yeah, it is a Paradox game. There's probably going to be a DLC. But you know what? I, I feel 50-50 about it. Because on, on one hand, yeah, DLC can be quite expensive. On the other hand, it means that they're going to keep coming back to the game. And that in itself is a good thing because it means it's going to get constant updates so i don't mind it in a weird way yeah we got some low rolls but it's because the spartan has crazy crazy defense oh we're just going to kill this settler apparently <laughs> no leave it alive can i steal the settler is that something i can do no the settler is still just chilling there oh i pushed it back into the city oh fair enough <laughs> that feels harsh that feels very, very harsh. Okay. Well, there you go. So, we've, uh, we've got uh, Japan City under siege. There's two tiles that I can attack the city with uh, without uh, having to cross the river, which is good. So, we've gone south of Brazil now. So, hopefully, my scout is going to continue finding... Um, New trouble villages, although the fact that frozen wastes has been discovered means that probably they're already down here. Um, oh yeah, we're generating four improvement points per turn now. Okay, this is good. Oh, look at look at all the borders expand. I like the fact we were watching that when that happened. Oh yes, lovely to see, lovely to see. So uh, next up, Byzantium, I'm going to do another forester. Um, the more production I get in the city, uh, the more improvement points. We get, look, you see that's just gone up a little bit as well. So which is really good. The blood from that wiped out tower is a little over top. That's what towers do. Have you never seen a tower being attacked by an archer? These things bleed. It's just what happens. <laughs> or I'll have a complete game. Yeah, it's it's difficult. I like I, I hear both sides of the argument. I don't I don't um I don't question that these things can be quite expensive. It's uh it's just one thing or another, isn't it? I, and, and I can see the advantages to both. Put it, put it that way. Put it that way. All right, let's move the units round to there. So we have this city entirely sieged now. 0.2 regional efficiency. I've burnt a ton of warfare um, things. Oh, no, I can't do that right now because they are stood in enemy territory. Let's just quickly do that. I'm burning a lot of experience, but I'm making experience. You know, you burn some to make some. Um, this army inside the city, what is that now? What have they got defending? Three militia, um, they've got a settler, they've got an envoy and a leader. Okay, no, we're, we're looking a lot stronger now. So we're going to wait until next turn and I'm going to start attacking 
like crazy. Like crazy. It's gonna happen over here. Steam sales. Yeah, Steam sales are really good for DLC. You can often get a game for a huge discount if you are if you're if you're willing to be patient. Oh look, here we go. So we got to 100 innovation. So some things happen. Now, this is a unique improvement that no one else in the game has. This is mine. The raider bands of Rome are feared by all other nations due to a ferocity that borders on madness. <laughs> so either raider bands can have oh my lord plus three attack and plus three defense. That's epic. Oh, that's for every unit. Or 300 wealth. No, no, take the combat strength. This is why innovation is really good. Really good. Embrace the chaos. Oh, chaos is coming. Don't worry. It was a compliment. Yeah, people people love to see that I'm mad. <laughs> that's how it works, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Oh, the um is the settler just dropped out of the city. No, that's an envoy. Okay, I'm gonna kill the envoy out. There we go, destroyed. That's good, because otherwise I would have had to have attacked it in the combat, which is really annoying. Let's siege the city and see what happens. They, they, we've got to get past the walls first, but I'm hoping... Oh yeah, the walls take some really big damage from my units. The leader is massively helping this, which is great. Um, and we've got enough units that I'm spreading the damage pretty effectively. Uh, what if we unlock the requirements for both the Heroic and the Blood Edge? Um, the Blood Edge happens. It's the Crisis Edge. Walls are down. Now we can attack the units. So we're not going to win this combat, but the walls are now down, uh, which means that our other army can attack because we've got two armies in this situation, which is awesome. We might lose that Raider, which is a bit of a problem, but don't worry. He's replaceable. We've literally got spares just outside. Yeah, the Blood Edge will happen as a default because that's the Crisis Edge. Um, so that always happens, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, that's not too bad. We took a little bit of damage. Both of our raider bands kind of got killed. But we don't mind that because we've now got the other raider bands on the other side. Which again, are just going to step out quickly. I'm going to use reinforcements to heal them. And then they're going to come back and attack the city again. Uh, the walls are already down, which means I now have the units that can just run in and do full damage against these militias. This is why... Overwhelming force on this game is absolutely something you need to try and do. If you go in with like a couple of powerful units, it's not going to get anywhere. You need lots of units to spread the damage so they don't know where they're going to attack. Um, so that you do lots of damage yourself. Two units routed. Good. Hopefully we can get that one routed as well. And is that just a settler? Yeah, it is. And <laughs> they're going to kill the units. They're not even stopping. They've already lost. Let them live. Let them live. <laughs> oh. I mean, literally, oh, the city the city has, has survived. I love that. Can I attack it with one spearman? Oh my god, I'm going to try. <laughs> oh no, it's just going to attack the lookout. <laughs> Let me win. Let me win. Oh dear. I like watching the rolls. It is something therapeutic about it. It is. Very much so. Okay, well, next turn we'll, we'll get the kill on Japan, which is... I mean, that is a result. I, I like that. That is a very, very decent military opponent on our borders uh, that we will have killed. So, I like that a lot. It's very good. Uh, so, who's going to have the honors? I think the first Varangian Legion will do it. Three population killed, ten wealth looted. 1.5 world uh, looted, so we got a little bit of gold, and we gained some chaos. That's all fine. It's taken. Japan has been eliminated, and I have another vassal. There you go. And we were going to name this Ryzantium, weren't we? Um, Ryzantium. Uh, always has been. Always will be. <laughs> it's on fire. It's going to take a long time to integrate into my lands um, because it's so far away. Uh, and also, it was a capital. But Japan's out. They're done. Did you take over credit? No, Japan will always be down as the people who discovered that. Alas. What can you do? What can you do? Actually, there's no point. There's no point putting that legion in there, is there? Oh, no! I've just realized I've renamed the... Oh, no, this wasn't named as the Varangian Legion. 
No, the, 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 the guards are too quick. I don't want to put my regular troops in. Oh, here we go. Community. Done. So now I can do two things. I can use my gold to rush a building. That's quite cool. And to rush uh, units. And I can now make flour and I can make saw pits. Oh, that's good. And there's cranes as well, which make improvement points. Kilns, which help me to make bricks. There's a lot of good stuff. That was a very, very good tech for us. Now, how much is a saw, a saw pit? It is 17 points. So I can make one next turn. I'm going to do that. Because although it can work three logs, right now I've got two. So the saw pit will improve two logs by two production. It will generate four more productions. So I'm going to go from seven to 11, which is awesome. I love that. That's really good. Is there a video today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight o'clock as normal. So the stream, we're going to end the stream um, probably about half past seven. Maybe a little bit later, but, but around that time because, um, yeah, we've got normal videos. Normal videos. We want to we wanna watch uh, our usual Civ content, eh? It's all good. So what else are we going to do? Belief. This unlocks a temple. I really like this. Extra culture and knowledge, which is good. How long is that from now? Uh, we'll be streaming probably another half hour. Half hour or so. And then we'll go from that. Is it confusing that we have Rizantium and Byzantium? That's my question to you all. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So this town. Mmm. This is an intriguing one because I could put an improvement next to the town and start to generate a bit of wealth. But I don't need to do that. I don't want to do that. Instead. What I'm going to do is put down the improvement over in this direction. Because Scrubland is, is pretty rubbish. We don't want that. Um, this is the saw pit. Now I'm going to generate some engineering XP. And we've got a huge amount more production. That has just generated a ton more improvement points for us. Um, we're now well on the way to making sure that all eight population have an improvement. That's kind of what we want to do. Pyzantium when... <laughs> I like it. We'll just go down the alphabet. That sounds great. Let's do that. Love it. Love it. Uh, all my troops, just making them heal for a couple of turns. Yes, 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 yes. That's all good. And actually, yeah. And then I think we're just going to start going over and taking out these city-states. Because why not? You have to ask yourself sometimes. Why not? Why not integrate them into the empire? You ask yourself the question, how long has it been since you thought about the Roman Empire? And if your answer is more than three days, come and play millennia. <laughs> Let's go and see what's over in this direction. Hopefully, oh, some land. No, no, we just found a seasoned barbarian. Some Cajun spices, some salt, some pepper. Delicious. <laughs> oh, come on, that's a good joke. <laughs> So, did I uh, show you what mining did? I'll show you that in a bit. Chaos lost in the woods. Here we go. Here's the chaos event that fired off. The scouts from Rome have lost their way and never returned. So you can choose to use your wealth to bypass a chaos event, which is quite good. Or you can just accept it. Oh, destroy scout cavalry. So it's just going to kill a unit. That's harsh. Ouch. Which unit did it kill? Did it kill the one down here? Yeah, it did. It just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. It just lost its way. That's it. It's gone. Dead. Dear, oh dear. How much army does Brazil have? Quite a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this. <laughs> no. No, I said no. No, 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 no. Go for someone different. Go for someone different. Don't allow yourself to be uh, swayed by a tempting target. You can, you can avoid it. It's fine. <laughs> I have died of dysentery. Yes, it's definitely an Ursa Ryan joke. Hey, that's a, the sign of quality, I'll have you know. An Ursa Ryan joke. Oh, actually, I realize we've got some government XP we haven't used. 
let's generate a settler. And I'm going to generate it from a city that's going to recover the population quicker, which is Crab Clantium. We've got ourselves a settler here now. And we can escort it out. And now we need to look for somewhere else that we want to put roots down. Some have a lot of different improvements. Oh, there's a lot of stone over here. No more confusing to me than England and New England. Hey, that's very different. <laughs> I won't have that. No, 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 no. Uh, 13 points. Let's slap down another forester. Um, you can see my housing and my food requirements are getting worse and worse. So Byzantium is starting to slow down. But now I have three worked lumber. So I'm using four population to generate 12 production. So I'm only getting three per tile, but it's an improvement. And you can see this is how we can chain goods together to get something that gives me uh, a benefit in the long run. So that's looking really good. We've still got three citizens working grassland. That is wildly inefficient. We want to we want to work on that if we can. But luckily, I think I know something that would work quite well. So we'll go through that. Uh, Crab Clan team is not get it's not getting a lot of love. I need to put some time and effort into this city. <laughs> not getting not getting a lot of love right now. But but trust me, we'll get there. Um, as soon as we start putting like pastures down, will this city will grow quick, very quick. Plus. The fun thing about the Age of Bronze is this is the age where things start to kind of like happen. Things start to get very powerful very quickly. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, okay, we've got a nice little army here. This is just a crazy army. The first Varangian Legion has changed into something very different. Uh, and this is the second one. So we're just going to make this just spiral towards this city over here. Excellent. This is what I mean. Oh, someone asked about different unit movements. So the Archer is slowing the whole thing down. So it's moving very, very slowly. So yeah, that does happen, unfortunately. Let's go and have a look around this way. I think this is going to be quite an easy victory for me, this uh, this city. Got to go now, need food. Good luck for the rest of the stream. Thank you. Don't worry, I'll be eating soon as well. <laughs> I am starving, very hungry. All right, going through now. We're starting to click through the turns. Things are happening. Things are going. Um, right, Byzantium. I want Byzantium to keep growing. And grassland is rubbish. It's rubbish. Which is worse, housing or food? We need more food. So one thing we can do is wheat. We can now move and move wheat into flour. So I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to take a tile and I'm going to say cooking. And let's make a mill. Let's turn. Two wheat into two flour. So this will turn, uh, because we've got wheat and it's worth four food each. This is eight food worth, and we'll turn that into 16 food worth. So watch this number. We are currently 20 out of 16. And then I'll put this improvement down, and bam! We are now 26 out of 16. And Byzantium is growing fast again, which is good. Huge cities, very important in this game. Very, very important in this game. You, you want to see it. You want... To see it fast, ideally. So, desert takes so long to travel through. I actually quite like the fact that desert in this game is um, it's a difficult, difficult for movement. Oh, this is going to be a really good city. Cotton, sheep, all the fish. Yeah, this is this is really, really good. Um, Demil's upgrade all of the resources it can at once. Yeah. Um. You need to chain buildings up. So different buildings can have different things, and they're not all balanced, to be honest, but a saw pit works three wood, up to three wood. So you need three foresters to make one saw pit worth it, but it's kind of like a three-to-one thing, which is good. Um, the farm, because we've got a wheat resource, we're getting two wheat. You can also put farms down on regular like resources, like, like with no resources, but you only get one wheat. So effectively, a farm on this tile is worth two wheat, and this one is worth one wheat. So this is why resources are always better. You always want to do this. Sieve with production chains. Yeah, absolutely it is. It absolutely is. Oh, no, hang on. Ugh, this is the thing. Greece has overtaken us again. Greece has overtaken us again. They are now working on the Age of Iron, and they're going to finish it in five turns, apparently. Ah, oh, I wanted an Age of Blood. I wanted the Age of Blood. Damn. Okay. 
we need to do this. We just didn't have enough science. I didn't get enough science in this game. Uh, what I could have done for that was finish the council building, which I could still do, to be fair. But I don't think I'm going to upgrade through it now. I guess I've got some culture, though. So, yeah. Um, at the moment, each town, uh, each city can only have one town, but you can upgrade that later. So that gets better and better and better. So you start to have multiple towns. Um, and you can see how a city gets really big. Because if I, say, claim this tile and stick a town down there, then this would give me all of the territory around here. And suddenly Byzantium's massive. So, so cities get huge on this game. They, they really do. Absolutely massive. It's quite fun. It's quite fun. Ah, oh, this is really annoying. I wish we could have pushed the age forward. How do we do this? Hmm. Is it worth diverting off quickly and going to the council? Oh, that would take me three turns to do it. And this game reckons the age of iron may become a feature in five turns. I don't know how accurate that is. Because I'm going to do it in 12 turns at the moment. And I don't... <laughs> it's not great. That's not great. Uh, hmm. If I don't try, I'm going to regret it. So I'm going to try putting that building down quickly. And then we'll go from there. We'll see if it goes. Iron, yeah. Iron's a good age. To be fair, it's not a bad age. The game just continues pretty much as normal. Um, it's just... It's just not what, we, not what we wanted to see. You know, we wanted to do something involving a little bit of chaos. So, we'll see what we can do. Actually, I need to move the other side of the river. The risk of the river is not good. We've learned our lesson. Don't attack from the river. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Do we not get the Age of Blood if Greece gets something first? Yeah, if Greece is the one to push the era forward, then they pick. And they haven't triggered the Age of Blood. Brazil wants open borders. Yeah, go on, man. You want to be friends? We can be friends. I can still go for it later. Um, yeah, four turns. I think this is fairly accurate, unfortunately. They're going to dictate the age that happens. I mean, I could try and get this Eureka, but it's only going to be eight knowledge. It would only push me through two turns. I, I wanted a bloodbath. Yeah, 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 I really did. But we needed more science. What can you do? What can you do? I focused on army. You know, I focused on army and that's what we did. Oh, Sao Paulo. A new town. A new vassal from Brazil. They're spreading out way quicker than Japan did. I love that. That's what you want to see. Um, right. Now, actually, we can just attack this city just without needing to declare war. Because it's a neutral territory. So, let's just go through it. I think, you know what? I think our, our barbs, uh, our, our raiders are just going to run in and destroy. Just go boom. Early game walls are very, very effective, by the way. They're very strong. They keep your armies out, they stop you from getting in, uh, but you do get siege weaponry later, like catapults. Uh, catapults blow walls to bits. They really do. <laughs> so walls become less effective, but then they start getting into stone walls and uh, it, it gets more complicated. So, yeah. They're doing a little bit of damage to me. Nothing I can't heal, but I think this is going to be an easy win. Yeah. Bam. Taken. Oh, we're just killing the militia for no good reason whatsoever. <laughs> Harsh. So, now, here we go. Here is a choice. Here is the choice. We have killed the city-state, and now we may choose one of two things. Either I destroy it and forcefully move the population back to Byzantium. That would mean I go from 8 population to 10 population. Just like that. But I would generate chaos doing it. That is tempting. But I could also create another vassal. And I think vassals later in the game, that is worth it more. So yes, I will create another vassal. But you can literally cart everyone back home. And you can, you can start pumping your capital full of all of the captured population. And you can make huge cities. Absolutely huge cities. Um, and yeah, you can do one city challenges as well. That absolutely would be a really, really good thing to do. Do we already know what the final era of the game is, um, like before modern times? Yes. Yes, we do. I know. I'm just not allowed to show you. <laughs> it's good, though. It's good, though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, vassal spam. That's exactly it. You've got it. You've got it. Um, right. Well, we'll go and claim another vassal, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want to pick a fight with Brazil right now. Not until I've built up some more troops. But, 
Yeah, this is good. This is good. No, we're not we're not going to get this science, are we? Which is really annoying. I think Greece is going to be boring and go to the age of uh, iron. We wanted blood. Give us blood. Come on, Greece. God. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, fair enough. Thanks for answering. Y yeah, um, I think if you watch the trailers, it's pretty clear that it goes... I think one of the late game crises that is in one of the trailers is um, uh, Age of Rogue AI. And it has a picture of what appears to be a giant death robot on it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this Barb wanted to, it wanted to fight. We killed it. That's fine. Uh, and now we just we move onwards to Nongoma. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. How's my raiders doing? I need 70. 70 for victors. Brilliant. And then we can get a legacy card, which is unit upkeep reduction. I don't really know how legacies work yet. I'll be honest. That's one stage of the game I haven't quite fathomed. Seems pretty good, though. So I'll just let this turn go through. Uh, Byzantium now has finished. It's building, it's council, so we've now on four science per turn. Yeah, if I've got uh, a science building in both of my cities, I'd be on five per turn, and we would have really rushed this a lot better. So that's fine. When do towns become level two? This is where engineering comes in. So I've been earning engineering experience from my sawmill. So some of these improvements give them to me. And one of the things you can use engineering experience on is expand town. Now, what this does is it gives me the option to dedicate or specialize a town into doing something. And tr it's very good. It's very, very good. <laughs> well, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to do quickly is just pick up another improvement in Byzantium. I need another dwelling. This gives me another three housing. I've got four out of four. Yep, there we go. Bam. Byzantium's now growing again. Just keep your cities happy. Keep them growing at all times. Uh, oh, yeah, my production is a lot better now. Should we work the temple quickly? That would give me extra culture, extra knowledge. Or I could go for a work camp, which gives me production and engineering experience. That's quite good, actually, because then we can improve our towns. Hmm. Or I can just generate a load of levy. Now, let's go for the work camp, and then we'll go for the temple after. I think that's probably going to be quite good. How do I marry my sister in this game? One proud Bavarian. <laughs> You should know better. <laughs> I've been, I've been, one proud variant has been also playing this game and it's been really fun watching somebody else get to grips with it. Um, because it's very different. It's very different dynamics and very different strategies. So trying to get your head around a game, especially when you've got one game in, in sort of in your head, really entwined with, uh, with how you play something. It's very good fun. Right, so we've got another Eureka. What are we going to do? A little bit of knowledge. Um, cutting edge. What would this do? Oh, this is good. So I can use my Eureka to get innovation. So innovation. I'm currently getting three points per turn because I was getting 10 and then it triggered. I lost 70% of it and I'm getting three per turn. So this sort of pushes it up a little bit again. Uh, or I could raise an army, a spear and an archer. We could go for a Eureka. Get myself a little bit more science. Two turns versus science. Doesn't feel like it. I feel like uh, an innovation. I mean, already our raiders became really, really powerful through an innovation. So yeah, I'm going to do that. That feels like a really good thing to do. <laughs> a really good thing to do. So we'll do that. Um, excellent. Yeah. And uh, I've changed my mind again. I keep changing my mind. I'm actually going to stop working the work camp. Um, and I'm going to put myself back onto levy workers. And the reason for that is because I want all of my tiles worked. I, I, every time I see working unimproved tiles, it's just not good. It's not good. If you're the first to get in the new age, you also get 10 innovation. Yeah, that's cool. That's not going to be me. <laughs> it's not going to be me. Alas, what can you do? So my new settlement is out. It's, be, it's popping along, which is good. Um, oh, hello. I think I just got into a scrap with the barb and came off second best, but my unit did survive. But uh, that wasn't very nice. 
and non goma yeah we're just going to be able to defeat this city state it's very much like the other one uh we get the kill and here we go we get another choice we can either bring the population back to byzantium or we can vassalize it again we're just going for vassal spam let's just do it why not why not vassals vassals everywhere but not a drop to drink because we're in a desert it's kind of it uh non goma to be fair this is a rubbish city i probably could have carted this one back to be absolutely honest with you but um i like the idea of just sort of yeah everywhere um these units are really quick and i'm gonna easily kill this i'm actually gonna bring my other army back down towards sao paulo maybe we can go to war with brazil i don't know <laughs> we'll see how it goes see how it goes Oh, there's a barb camp that's just appeared above it. All right. Scrap that plant. <laughs> We're going to go kill a barb camp. Uh, this should be an easy kill, actually. Yeah, oh God, it's got one unit and walls. And they can barely do yeah, damage to me. Um, you, can, you can accelerate the combat through like that. There you go. So you don't have to watch it every time. What are we going to do? Warfare XP or engineering XP? Right, I'm going to take engineering XP. Because now, um, just as we're coming to the end of the stream, I've now got 30 engineering XP. I can, I can do something called expand town. Oh, rebuild ruined town. Oh, I think, does that work on this? Does that work on this? Yes, I can rebuild the town I destroyed later. Okay, that's good. We know that for later. Um, but we have Chonky Town. Chonky Town is currently a level one town. What I'm going to do is use my experience on it, and I'm going to expand the town. Chonky Town is going to be renamed... It's going to be renamed to Chonkier Town. Ch Chonkier Town. There you go. It's now plump. It's now wonderful. And it's now a level two town. So very first of all, what it does is for every improvement around it, I now get two wealth rather than one. So that's all very good. So we've uh, just generated two more gold per turn. But I can now specialize in it. And there are four choices. A farming town, a lumber town, a mining town, and a coastal town. Now, if you have improvements that matches the specialization in that town, you get extra bonuses. It is always worth specializing. You always want to. You don't want to leave a town unspecialized. The farming town, well, I already have one farm. So I'm going to make this into a farming town. And you can see, I now get an extra two food just from that farm. So, so that's just stacked above. And actually, I could change the specialization to a lumber town because I've also got a lumber mill next to it. And instead, I'd be getting an extra two production. So there are some really, really cool things you can do. I I'm going to stick with a farming town because what I'm now going to do is we are going to gather up this wheat, make another two wheat, which will hugely improve my food and give this another two food. So we're making some more wealth, more food, Byzantium has all of the food it could ever need. It, 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 is, it is a massive and beautiful city. It's wonderful. It's, it's very plump. Um, and now I can look uh, potentially to improve the housing and go from there. And this is kind of it. This is the sort of chains of stuff you do. Later, I want to unlock mining because then I can get quarries and I can put... Uh, these marble and improve the marbles. I can get stone cutters and I can improve Pompeii into a mining town. So that's something I do want to do. Uh, but we're going to start upgrading Crab Clantium now because we've got 188% growth on Rhizantium. Uh, that is awesome. Rename it American Obesity Town. <laughs> it's wheat, it's not sugar. It's different. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, these units are. If I really want to fight Brazil, <laughs> I'm going to lurk nearby and put the fear of God in them. <laughs> and raiders, here we go. Um, two extra raiders in my homeland and 20 extra health gained from victories. Wonderful. There you go. We've, uh, we've done this really well. And I can now spend one point and get the legacy, which means that all of my units are slightly cheaper to maintain as well, which is cool. Um, we've got loads. Oh, we've got so many units just sat back at home now. We do not need all of these here. What am I going to do? I'm going to go and kill some barbs with them. Uh, let's leave one behind. 
I'm going to move you out, leave you there so that you are trying to stop Byzantium from revolting, and then uh, another Thrangian force is going to go kill some barbs. Wonderful. Isn't it great? Well, we've got we've got so many people watching this. Um, let me know. Let me know. What do you think of the game? What your your opinions? I mean, my my opinion is kind of this, right? I it needs a bit of polishing. I think the graphics could use a little bit of improvement. I think the interface could maybe be smartened up, especially some of the graphics uh, just on the map and in the combat and everything. But we'll see this a little bit. If if I do a second stream and we'll continue this save, I really, really, really like the gameplay. The gameplay is really, really cool. So that I'm 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 feeling quite positive about it, to be honest with you. It's it's actually it's been deceptively fun to play. And I I, I feel very optimistic about that. So yeah, I don't know. I I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good about it all. Oh, Bob's, I'm yeah, I'm gonna kill my boy. Why not? Yeah, gameplay. Gameplay over graphics. That's kind of what's happened here. Um, and I don't mind that, you know? I don't mind that. The flow is cool. And and it's a, it's we haven't quite got to the sort of final stages of the of the flow, but the flow will continue to be cool as well. Like it is it is very good. Especially as you go through the later stages of tech, um, you'll find that it gets it gets pretty cool. It's awesome. Uh, interested enough to try it out myself. Haven't felt the wish to play Humankind in New World. This one is engaging enough without being complicated. Yeah, no, no, it's cool. It's different. I think there are elements of it that's harder. Combat is definitely harder than Civ. Civ combat is really easy. Um, yeah, uh, look, look, looks like really fun. Um, gameplay looks fun. Graphics aren't great, but they're more than playable, and that's what you can ask for. Yeah, if it was like ten years ago, you'd look at this and go, "Hey, it's awesome." <laughs> <laughs> we're spoiled now we're spoiled um here we go crab clantium is uh, now starting to not uh, grow so i'm going to put down a pasture and that now gives me a meat which gives me food and it gives me wool and i'm actually now earning some exploration xp every turn scout xp and animal husbandry are all linked together which is pretty cool uh there is fast movement and fast combat i think i just haven't turned them on <laughs> so to, to give it its fairness um yeah there we go greece has pushed it into the age van I, I i need to get better at this i need to learn to practice this myself but i think i can be the one to push that forward um mine improvements are 20 percent off during the age van that makes sense um growth rate increases as well and new governments unlock yes and this is where governments begin to get quite exciting because now, in my culture, um, I will unlock the peaceful revolution. And I can upgrade my government. And you'll see me move on from a tribal government to something more exciting. And as the game gets further and further and further, and now we're in the Age of Iron, yeah, you'll see it just gets better and better and better. Um, oh no, we're 110. I'll, I'll let it roll forward. I'll let it roll forward, and then we'll, we'll end the stream there. Um, Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to run fast. These bar Oh, these barbs are a little harder. Seasoned barbarian and archers. All right, let's take this one out because I think a, a, a kill gets me health, right? So it's actually better to make these kills. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Yep, now I'm on full health now. <laughs> That's great. And I've got spare wharf there. So I'm going to just raise value multiplier. And I've now got two more. <laughs> I love... I love this. Yeah, Warfare has been really fun. I've enjoyed it. We've got this city now ready to settle. Lots of fish on the coast. We need a bit of a coastal settlement. That's good fun. And what can I do to improve Crab Calantium? Hmm. Hmm. Not much, to be honest. <laughs> I guess actually this wheat will get uh, included eventually. Should we start a lumber mill? Is a lumber mill worth it? Probably not. Probably not. I'll think about this. We'll, we'll think about this. I'll save my points for now. If it was 10 years ago, I'd have a lot more work to do than playing games, uh, Forex games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, it's good. It is good. 
Aria. Aria will be interesting as a game. I'm looking forward to seeing what that does. What it's about. What 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 can it do? If it can shake everything up, uh, I, I think that'll be awesome. Oh, look, my, uh, my raiders have actually leveled up now. So they've got themselves a little bit more attack and defense, which is awesome. I think we missed the age by one turn, didn't we? That is so frustrating. Maybe I could have rushed it. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, arts is a domain. New government and golden iron are now available. An alliance with Brazil. Hmm, I'm going to reject that for now because I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And here we go. A new form of government is available. We have an option. Either I can violently overthrow my government now. Or I can wait for my culture to give me the peaceful revolution. So 10 turns and I could do that. But um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll do that next uh, next time, I think. We'll do that next time. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. This is turn 51. So if you were playing the demo in a few days time, you have another 10 turns to push this even further. I think it's really good. Is this early Civ 7? No, 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 no. Different company. Different game. I know people are being silly, but one thing I'll say, a lot of people are asking for Civ 7 early. Give it time. The longer they have on it, the more polished it'll be and the better game it will be. And the worst thing you can do is rush these sort of things. I hope everybody's enjoyed. It's been brilliant. Before we go, before everyone goes, can we all do me a favor? Do you mind liking the stream for me? And in the chat, everyone say huzzah. Everyone say huzzah. I want to see that all before we go because that always makes me smile. <laughs> It has been an absolute pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I hope it's been good fun. There we go. They're all piling in now. Huzzah! You are all lovely people. Lovely, lovely people. Ah, oh, Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you all next time. Goodbye! <laughs>